Welcome back to the Fast Life Podcast, which is brought to you by Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. Without a doubt, Simpson has been my go-to helmet since 2016. Their iconic and aggressive style has set them apart from other brands. Simpson offers many different styles of helmets to fit your taste and budget. Head on over to SimpsonMotorcycleHelmets.com to check out all the different options they have for you and give these guys a follow on Instagram at Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. On today's episode, we have Max Schaff from 4Q Conditioning out of Oakland, California. Now, I grew up watching this guy as a professional skateboarder, uh, vert ramp, doing a lot of cool shit when I was younger as a kid. I always wanted to skate vert, but I didn't quite have a, a place to go skate a vert ramp. So anyway, I've always been a big fan of his. And crazy enough, I saw a documentary back in 2016 called Six Over with him in it as a chopper builder. Ever since then, I've been a big fan, and I was uh, pretty stoked to be able to sit down in his shop and talk to him about his past growing up in the skateboard culture and how he transitioned into more of the uh, chopper building and customizing world. So let's jump into these sponsors real quick, and then we're going to get right into this episode with Max Schaff. Cowboy Harley Davidson is located in South Austin, and they are ready to help you get on the new bike you have been thinking about or help you get your current bike dialed in with all the performance parts and upgrades you need from service to sales and everything in between check them out at cowboy harley austin.com and on instagram at cowboy harley austin they have new 2023 bikes rolling in daily so give them a call or head in and let them know that the fast life sent you our longest running podcast supporter lex and moto and our bluetooth headset of choice here at the fast life since 2019 is still here providing you with one of the best Bluetooth headsets on the market, the G16, which I personally use on my motorcycle rides to check out everything from my favorite playlists to my favorite podcast. The battery life and sound quality is amazing on these headsets. Earlier this year, Lexan dropped the Smart Tire Pump, which became an instant everyday carry for many people on motorcycle trips. Well, now they have refined and taken the pump to new levels with the Lexan Smart Tire Pump Gen 2, which now offers an internal cooling fan, is 20% smaller in design, and can double as a portable charger while you are away from civilization. Pair these great products with some of the best customer service in the industry, and head on over to lexan-moto.com and drop the Fast Life offer code to save yourself 15% off your order. And don't forget to give these guys a follow on Instagram at Lexan Moto. If you have seen any of my personal bikes in person or on the gram over the past six years, you will definitely notice my ongoing support for Lucky Dave's. Their seats have always fit my ass perfectly and had the style profile I prefer in the two up seat game. I have ran the San Diego bars on my FXR and Dynas for years. Now I currently run the Peacemaker Bar and Riser series on my 2020 Road Glide. These bars are dope with many options to customize the appearance as well as get you dialed at the right height and hand position. I would go as far to say that the Lucky Dave's riser bar is one of the most comfortable bars on the market no matter what risers you put them in. Check out all the options for your ride at luckydaves.com and give these guys a follow to stay up on product releases and inventory restocks on the gram at Lucky Dave's. Hey guys, you ready to let the dogs out? Fast Life Podcast. I actually have never had a, I've never done like something with a microphone like this, so oh, I'll real? get used to it in a minute. Yeah. Well, I, dude, you've done so much stuff, dude. It's like, it's an endless supply. I actually binged most of it. I watched, uh, you know, Another backstory, but I, I've really been into the whole Epically Later series oh, for a while. Yeah, it's pretty and special. I've been watching all that stuff because, you know, I grew up, you know, skating, not good at it, but I right. grew up, you know, at least keeping some board companies in business and some truck yeah. companies and shit. So, um, did you say you learned a kickflip in one day? Uh, on no, that? I learned how to Ollie a four star. Ollie one in one yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. I was like, damn, that's, I mean, that's a rare thing. Yeah, well, I, I'm coordinated. I'm really okay. coordinated. Yeah. So, uh, played sports my whole life. So it was easy to kind of do certain things. But I feel like the rest of my uh, skateboard career, it was my head. I couldn't get things out of my head. I couldn't, 
you know, I'd do the bigger stairs, but then I was not, I never planned to land it. Cause I was like, there's no way, you know right. what I mean? It was all mental. Yeah. I yeah. Like. There's a lot of mental yeah, in that game. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, um, no, I, like I said, I grew up, I knew who you were when I was a kid. You know what I mean? Cause I was, uh, I was into, uh, I, I got introduced to this in vert and then I was like, I want to skate trip. vert. And then I realized there's no fucking vert anywhere right. around. Yeah. And then I found a skate park in Dallas that did have one. I go up there and I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to start here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. and there's all these other dudes on it all night. So it's like, I'm never going to, which park was that? It was a freestyle in Kennedale, Texas. Okay. And then this was back in like 97, 98. Oh, it was a dark, the dark days of vert for sure. It was. Yeah. I mean, there's just no one wanted to do it. Everyone mm-hmm. wanted to street skate. Yeah. Well, it, it kind of pushed me into street skating cause I didn't right. really have, I feel like I couldn't scratch that itch of the vert thing. So, right. but yeah, I had homies that had like mini ramps and stuff yeah. and that was always it. I still want a mini ramp today Yeah, and I'm going to fuck myself up. Yeah. But they're the shit though. Yeah, I want one. Yeah. They're fun. You, <laughs> you get broke off, but, uh, you can pretend you're on vert. Like I, I had a little tiny mini ramp next to the vert ramp. I used to skate. Yeah. And it's, it was this big, you know, three feet tall and I'd learn something on there and then have to take it to the vert. Mm. But it, you still got like the turn of your shoulders and you're yeah. like, okay, a little, a little more psyched to try it versus just 12 feet. Yeah. Yeah. That's once you, like, like I said, once you actually get vert on the ramp, that shit, I would like be able to kind of, you know, just pump up to it and, yeah. you know, maybe hit the coping, right. do a little turn and burn down, yeah. but yeah. dropping in, fuck no, I tried yeah. it once and busted my ass and yeah. it was, uh, it was it. And I was like, I'm fucking over that. Yeah. <laughs> I watched my best friend, the guy that I was, uh. 13 when i met him and he was like nearly 16 and he was like i'll drive he had a little honda yeah and i could already drop in on vert and he hadn't done it and we we're like all right dave he's the guy you know yeah. he's like our fucking boy or some friends from oakland and we're like all right you just stomp on your front foot you know everyone tells you that stomp on yeah. your front foot just lean like, all the way in right don't lean back he was so nervous he put his foot up and he stepped over the front of his board this wasn't a huge vert ramp, but it was 10 and a half feet. Uh-huh. And he just splatted to the bottom and it looked like the police chalk drawing. He was just down there <laughs> fucking. And we we're like, you know, these bloods are skating around him. Ah, you know, and I'm just like, I think my friend is dead <laughs> next day. You know, you don't bruise at 16, 15, yeah. barely. He was bruised from like ankle to hip. Damn. Is, is real. Did he ever get back on it and try? He did, but I... I mean, I swear it changed his game forever. For real. You know, because every time you were like, fucking do it. You got it. You yeah. got it. He was like, you told me that that time. <laughs> right? I don't believe you anymore. You kind of reverse that concept, but yeah. you can't do this shit, dude. <laughs> totally, totally. <laughs> no, I mean, that's wild. But, it, you know, like, well, first off, man, let me just think that. Thank you for uh, sitting down and answering my message. I, absolutely. You know, I really appreciate it. I have uh, been following uh, your motorcycle career uh, since I got into the into the chopper world actually the one the thing that got me in was two documentaries it was 21 days under the sky yep and six over and six over was it still is my favorite one like don't get me wrong i love the 21 days but six over just like the personality and each guy that was on it yeah and uh you know still this day like some of the guys like uh jeremy uh fuck um it's been a minute since i watched it but the the fuck what's this dude down there he was bringing you a tank to paint it. Uh, oh, Jason Weber. Jason. Yeah. Love that dude. Best dude. He's fucking funny Best as fucking hell, dude. man. He but, still is that, you know, everyone changes and that's good, right? Yeah, yeah. But like, you know, when you're like, I hope this one part of my homie never changes. Oh, yeah. it, it never changed. He's nice. always that dude. Funny as fuck. Kind of like, uh, life sucks, <laughs> you know, but inside he like raised the best daughter in the world. Yeah, yeah. Moved out to Tennessee. Just, oh, he's out there now? Yeah, just to okay. kind of have a better spot for his family mm-hmm. you know california is too expensive that uh you know like i was telling you before coming off of that big wheel stuff it's like seeing those videos and then kind of uh and to kind of wrap this all back into each other that yeah. was 2016 when i saw this and then in dallas i had we had the local shop we had chopper supply right with kenny out there so yeah. i just <laughs> i bought a dyna first to get off my big wheel. i don't want to ride the big wheel bagger to the chopper shop sure. like, hey guys what do y'all do yeah um and Kenny was super helpful. And then like a, a, a week later was Southern Throwdown. Okay. And you were at that yeah. one that year. And I yeah. remember because I had watched those documentaries and I saw you there and I was like, oh man, I want to go say something. That's the dude from the fucking video. Yeah. And I was, just, I was too pussy. I was so drunk, man. 
<laughs> I had to introduce some award and I told a bad joke and I was just <laughs> like, man, I, I got to stop drinking at these things. But yeah. you get so much anxiety and, mm-hmm. you know, someone expects you to be a certain way to just get a little, yeah. like you were saying earlier, just to like take that edge off. Yep. And then you're, it's a slippery slope <laughs> at a dunking booth, you know, yeah. it's just, I was just like, yeah, it was wild. Yeah. It was but no, I mean time. that, that documentary was so fucking awesome. And, uh, and I've always just admired that. And then, you know, and then I started going to things like Giddy Up and, and then, you know, those other smaller shows. And then I saw how intimate and how, you know, how much passion was actually in it. It wasn't like a dick swinging contest. Yeah. I mean, there's probably some of that there, but For it was sure. not, it didn't feel like it was, uh, nobody was like sweating how much money somebody spent. It was like, the coolest yeah. thing was like, how much did you not spend? Right. You know, right. right. So what, what, every, what did you work with? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so I just fell in love with it and. You know, I, I was I was too much of a pussy to go get a chopper, mm-hmm. you know, because I just I like to travel on the bikes and I just wasn't right. ready for that kind of a, well, I don't know what this does. I'm, I'm literally going from fuel injection backwards. Right. So I just didn't grow up knowing that stuff and totally. whatnot. But I have had the pleasure of running Arlen S motorcycle products on my Road Glide and now Lowrider ST. From wheels to handlebars and everything in between, Ness has the parts to not only make your motorcycle look badass, but also perform better. A great place to start on your custom journey is with one of the 12 different custom air cleaners Ness provides, giving you options to fit your budget and taste. There is no shortage of killer products for you to enhance your motorcycle riding experience. Head on over to ArlenNess.com to see the vast parts catalog and drop Fast Life 10 in all caps to save yourself 10% off the entire website. And don't forget to give these guys a follow on the gram at Arlen Ness Motorcycles. Now let's get back to the show. It's, you know, man, I'll, it's real classic and you hear it a thousand times. They're tractors. Yeah. Right. The You know, it's a um, great experience riding the, the generator shovel to New York and back. Mm-hmm. We're almost home. We stop in like Nevada on that loneliest highway and mm-hmm. old boy comes out and he's like, you know, kind of doing the walk, kind of looking down his nose and looking around. He goes, uh, nice bar hop, uh, nice bar hopper. And I was like, yeah, thanks. You know, fucking I'm down for a compliment, like whatever you want to call my bike. Yeah. And uh, he didn't call it a sportster, you know, that's, which a lot yeah, of people at least do. That's a good- and uh, <clears throat> he goes, you know, you can't really ride that anywhere. And I go, oh, and then he looks at the plate and he goes, oh, shoot. Well, you rode from California. I said, well, actually, you know, we rode to New York. We're on our way home. Mm. He said nothing. Just turned around, walked away. I guess I'll go fuck myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> but, you know, when you got it dialed in, like I said, on an RT, it's so comfy. It's so, they're so killer. Yeah. You'd beat the shit out of them. Uh, you know, check your wheel bearings and your belt, Pretty much, you yeah. know, and go. Um, these things, you start, your ears start to get that road ears at the end of the night. You mm-hmm. hear like your lifters and everything. You start to isolate all these different oh, sounds. bro, that kind of stuff. I wore earplugs for like hundreds of miles just to eliminate that. And then I missed kind of mm-hmm. the sound of the wind and everything. That but, uh, sense. that, you know, 65, 75 geared properly. Yeah. You can do it. And the cool thing is they're so prehistoric. You meet people that are like, what do you need? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I've heard. I mean, I've heard that, you know, danger Dan always says the road provides. Yeah. You know what I mean, so it's like, yeah, I know it's possible. I just, you know, <laughs> I gotta stop being a fucking, you know, pussy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is, it is what it is. I am, I, I am building an FXR chopper this year though. Swing nice, arm still. Nice. So uh, yeah. D rake style, you know, all that mess. And I do plan on, you know, taking that at least halfway across country from Dallas. Yeah. So. Yeah. Twin cabinet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you'll see it. It's, it's a different trip. And, uh, what my whole thing is like, get it while you can. Yeah. Like I can still kickstart a bike. Yeah. So later in life when I can't, maybe that's when I tip it up and hit the button. Exactly. But no disrespect. It's all, you know, I grew up with the push mini bikes, my Steve brother man. and I, and, uh, that was that thing where you're like, you can't go nowhere on it. That was, you're a kid, you're fucking yeah, yeah. eight years old around the neighborhood, breaking chains. And I remember we'd wear, you know, skid so much the, the, the sprocket would drag on the ground, but that was my first chopper is those little things yeah. with my older brother. And that was the weirdest thing about this is I had that mentality where I was like, well, I'm going to build this thing and you won't be able to ride it anywhere. Mm. And then you start to go, 
you know, then go across the Bay Bridge is right there. Yeah. Across the Bay Bridge, and you're like, damn, I'm going to go to Santa Cruz tomorrow. And, and it's just like the kid on the skateboard. You start pushing further and that further. freedom. Yeah. And then you start to, like, trust your work. Tank comes loose. Peg falls off. You know, you're like, okay, yeah. this is the shit I need to work on. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I guess we're jumping right into it. But, you know, back in early 2000, when I finished mine, I started in 98, bought it off the front lawn of this dude. He just passed away, actually, just heard. It was a mm-hmm. kind of sad news uh, two days ago. But he sold me a bike off his front lawn. Um, you, you just start to kind of learn, you know, mm-hmm. what, what you're doing. But there was no one into it here. So there was no one judging you. There was no one zooming in on your photo of your fucking risers on backwards. Or yeah, yeah. There wasn't like any haters. There was just, you'd go out to the clubhouse or to Sonny's shop, which was called uh, Oakland Custom Flashes at the time. Mm-hmm. You see the Flash documentary? That thing no. that dude filmed with Not Flash yet. from, oh bro, I'll send it's it good. to you tonight. It's insane. Some famous interviewer dude that interviews people in the Appalachians and different stuff, but it's Oh, you talking about uh, the white underbelly? Yeah, guy? yeah, yeah. So he does. I, fl- I didn't know he did one with Dude, the guys. Dude, it's it's insane. Like nice. it's just fucking insane. So that's uh, remember Flash helped me a few times, but they would clown you for doing something stupid. You know, couldn't get the cups in the frame. You yeah. know, they're like, well, some all threads, some washers, and two bolts. And I I listened to one of your podcasts. You said you learn from video or learn from doing, not mm-hmm. from reading. Mm-hmm. I'm the same exact way, right? Get a transmission, take it apart, put it back together. Yeah. But when I'm looking at the book, I'm scratching my head. Or if someone's like, just do that. Yeah. I have to do it. So he would kind of show me how to do stuff. But as far as like a young peanut gallery ready for you to make a mistake, it wasn't there. Mm-hmm. So it was really cool. I got to like be like teaching yourself to skate on a farm, you know? I got to kind of teach myself this day by day. And if I made a mistake... No one was like, ha uh-huh. Yeah. You know, it wasn't the cool, I don't even want to say cool guy, but it wasn't like a cool thing. Yeah, that's a good point, man. I, I never really thought about that recently, how it's like, you know, we're all kind of searching for a little bit of validation, but we don't necessarily want the uh, criticism right. in the form that it comes. Right. It'd be different if it felt more sincere. Yeah. You know, and online, it's just, you know, it's more of a, you know, like, why would you even say that kind of thing? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But back in the day, like I remember, cause you know, when I first started painting, and I would take the paint jobs to like the guy that I kind of learned under. He'd be like, man, it looks really good. You know, just, you need to button up this, 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 and cool. this. And I'm like, fuck yeah. yeah that's the perfect like, way. You know, there's not like, oh, that shit's weak. You know what right. I mean? Right. Looks yeah. like you copy somebody else. It's totally, not that shit. Totally. You know I mean? Totally. Yeah. I remember I put a rear tire on backwards. I did, dude, I put my <laughs> back, my front wheel on backwards and rode it to Sturgis last year. <laughs> it's just the tire trail was going the wrong right. way. Right. Yeah. And you know, someone cool would be like, hey man, killer bike. Your tires backwards. And that's exactly what happened. You never, yeah. And you're never just noticed. like, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that's, you know, that's the thing. Like skating, uh, there's, you're never going to be the best mm-hmm. and there's no rules to it. Yeah. You know, don't push with your front foot. Fuck. Even people have done that and become pro skating skaters. Mongrel. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, with, with this thing, with the chopper thing, that was kind of my thing is like, man, you could. You could do what everyone's doing. And my first bike did look like someone else's bike because mm-hmm. I was inspired. But then as soon as you kind of find your deal, it's what sky's yeah. the limit. Well, I've always said this, and you might have heard it in that podcast with Scott, but I felt like we're all just a vessel for all of our inspirations. And that what that's what creates our unique individual thing. Right. It is like the people that we've been inspired by or learned from or whatever the case may be. Yep. You know, um, if, if you like this builder, this builder, this builder, you know, they're all kind of different. And then you're, you know, as that flows through you, something different comes out that's unique. Totally. But it's still, yeah, it's going to have this, this kind of, maybe it's the city you grew up in that has a little bit of a, Fully. you know, taste into the bike. Yeah, or you or see like grays and blues or like I yeah, was yeah. back in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And like, I saw a lot of yellow on bridges and stuff. Like you never know how it all goes yeah. into the chili, but I think <laughs> as long as you, I think a lot of people now, they're like, I like that front end. I like that little swoop on the tank. I'm going to do one of those. Uh-huh. That shit, or the boomerang on the front of the chopper, you know, they yeah. all put the thing now. It, it's more weight. It's more. You know, mm-hmm. it looks cool, but, like, it's been beaten to the ground. That's where, like, I, 
I try to pull back and like you look at a real knuckle early frame that are braised and you see that casting and yeah. it's like, let's show off that casting. That's the, as long as you think for yourself and get yeah. inspired by others. I mean, well, it goes back to what you just said though. I think a lot of people are maybe they're, they're building their first chopper, you know, or, or doing what they can. Right. And then it comes out and they put it all in the world and the world's like, Oh man, like you just, yeah. cause there's it's no context true. behind it. Right. It's true. And so, you know, it's just hard for anybody to kind of really just get it out there and get get positive feedback, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, yeah, everybody's got a fucking opinion these days, right? Yeah. Like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's every once in a while you want a thumbs down button, right? Like yeah. someone says something fucking stupid and you want to give them a thumbs down. Yeah. Uh, thank God there isn't, you know, because people would just power Dude, for, trip on yeah. it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that that's it. That that thing, man. It's a it's an evil little deal. But we, you know, we want to watch some Hell's Angels ride into Altamont. Yeah, you get to find the thing and watch it. Or it's crazy how much information. I think when you is. search for something, that, you know, when Instagram first kind of came out, it was inspiring, right? To see culture and people and art and photography and places that you didn't know exist or you didn't right. know they existed in America. Right. It was just like this you know, yeah, you could follow your old lady and your, yeah. your mom and your brother, <laughs> yeah. but there's all these other things that were kind of creative people that were putting something on the t- table to learn. Yeah. And then now it's like, everybody's a fucking influencer and a brand yeah. ambassador and yeah. it's all sales. And I'm guilty of this as well. So, you know, I'm yeah. speaking from my own feelings towards what I feel like my Instagram has become in some aspects, you right. know, but I, I just want to get back. I, I just, I like to, find things and then i've actually started unfollowing a lot of people that i actually consider friends right but not because i don't want to be connected to them i'm actually connected to them in real life sure but i I just want less shit on there so that when i open the app it's kind of just a curated place of things that i actually want to see absolutely and find inspiration from and not like yeah no i i i feel that man i i read a lot of books you know and i'll I notice when I'm reading a good book, I'm not, I'm not gramming, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm like totally stimulated in a different way. And then I'm down here, but, uh, you can get wrapped up in it. And like you said, there's good stuff on there, but there's plenty of, you just spiraled off on some fight videos, you know, and you're like, I'm 20 deep <laughs> into this like fight <laughs> video. What am I doing? Yeah. But yeah, it, I think about, uh, the most popular shit on there or TikTok or whatever is pop. You know, it's like pop trendy stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's like the curse of popularity. It's not the quality stuff. It's, it's fluff. It's, Mm -hmm. it's easy for everyone to like, you know, and someone says to me like, Oh, you got a popular Instagram or you're popular. I'm like, man, I'm not fucking popular. Like look at Jason Momoa's Instagram. Look at, look Mm -hmm. at a pop music stars Instagram. It's like a billion followers. Does that make it good? No. On that note, I feel like what happens and maybe you can add to this. It's like, I feel like because things, what Instagram has done now is they're trying to reward people that get views on things. Mm -hmm. So people are all curating ideas or their art, if you will, to be some kind of clickbaity thing. Right. And so to get views instead of to just like, you know, real art was never made to be that way. It was never made to be something that you're trying to get all this shit on. If you're, if you're a photographer, you're a videographer, you make choppers, you make shit art, whatever. It's like, now you can't just do a badass painting and post a picture of it. Right. You got to do a reel and it's got to spin around and it's right, got to right. have a good song on it. Totally. So it's like, it takes yeah. away from like, man, this is not the way that I intended for this to be viewed to the world. And it's right. unfortunate that this app is, t- it's curating the way people have to be. Right. If they want it, they want the incentivization incentivization yep. of, you know, eyes on it. And it's just, it's creating like a lot of the same shit over and over yep. again. You yeah, know? dude, I kind of, I had that blog back in the day and it had like a really wild following at one time. You know, I was like, man, this is cool. I just would vomit. I call it that. I'd vomit stuff out. Mm-hmm. Say it was, uh, I found like some acoustic Hendrix thing and it was just badass and it gave you the goosebumps, mm-hmm. you know, like put that on there and then put a picture of Sonny or, and put a picture of like my dog climbing a tree or like, yeah, yeah. you know, or what I was working on a paint job, but it was all like this, you know? Right. And if you wanted to come to the party and look at it and say badass or mm-hmm. my dad had one like that or whatever, you know, you could, but it wasn't, I didn't interact with like a lot of 
other blog people. I didn't consider myself a blogger. I, I just had this diary mm -hmm. online. And that was the trick with this thing is like, you're getting fed so much. And I would get the thing where someone would follow me. They're like a fan. And then I would meet them and they'd say, hey, bro, give me a follow. I look at their gram and it's like chili recipes and their baby, you know, and I'm like, fuck, man, I'm not trying to follow this. Like, I'm just not. Like you said, you yeah. want to tighten it up. And then they unfollow me. And I was like, man, that's pretty fucking backwards. Yeah. Like you were a fan or I inspired you in some way, but I didn't, I don't want to follow your chili and baby Instagram. And now you feel disrespected or something. Yeah. It's like, I was more than friendly to you in person and we were real, yeah. but that's that weird thing. So I just, you know what, man, I haven't posted something for a while. I put my little stories up. I barely look at it. Yeah. Look at some friends stories. And then I put it on the back page of your pages. So I have to like scroll to it. Yep. So that sometimes you're like, what the fuck am I doing right now? Yeah. Like get, third swipe. You're like, why yeah, am I get, over here? Get back to it. <laughs> but it's funny. If you would have said you were going to come here and we were going to talk about Instagram, I would have laughed. You know, yeah, like, nah, just, dude, we're not going to fucking talk about it. But it's something that's just shoved in our face. And, you know, when you sent me the message to be on here, uh, I said yes before I took the deep dive down your gram. Yeah. Because I trust everything by a feeling. And I just was like, let's do it. And yeah. then when I looked at it, I was like, cool, man, this is a little different crowd probably. Mm -hmm. And, uh, why not? Because most likely you're here because you dig motorcycles mm -hmm. and I dig motorcycles and you dig motorcycles and they don't, thank God they don't all look the same. You yeah. Know? I think, uh, if I was, you know, for my, I guess my fuel injected audience that listens to this, yeah. um, I think right now in our little scene, our world, our little performance bagger performance motorcycle scene, I think we're, we're in a transitional phase of like growing pains where people need to hear someone that has, you know, like I, like I said, I've, I've, I've listened to your, a lot of things that you've on a lot of the videos, the lowbrow stuff, the born free stuff. I've even listened to some of the skate podcasts that you've been on. Right. And it's just like, people need another perspective on this. Right. Right. They're, they're, they're kind of, I feel like a lot of people are just going through this motorcycle scene right now without any understanding of motorcycle scenes before. Right. And the things they should appreciate, they're kind of throwing to the trash and the things that are becoming kind of normal are the things that kind of run scenes in the trash. Right. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And it wasn't so much like, hey, I'm going to bring you on so you can like warn all these guys. But, you know, like I, I figured that, you know, you have, you know, just by talking about your lineage within the, I mean, not even talking about the skateboard culture. Right. Just bikes. Right. That that people would be able to, you know, you've been doing this for a long, oh, damn near 20 years yeah. now. Over 20 yeah, years, over right? 20 years, yeah that's something that everybody should be striving to be at, right. you know, being into something like motorcycling for 20 years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, uh, a 10 year thing, like I, <clears throat> I'm not a surfer, but I started surfing because it's fun and it's easier on my body. I've been doing it seven, eight years. I went like the first years, a hundred times, wake up four 30 in the morning, mm -hmm. be the first guy out. Uh, it's not for everyone. Don't start because it's already too crowded, but <laughs> Even right now, I'm like, man, I can do this and it feels good. And if I did it for 10 years, I would feel accomplished. Not even trying, to, I'll never be sponsored. I'll never get anything from it. Yeah. It's just for me. But like, you remember when you were a kid, when you were a freshman in high school to a senior, that felt like 20 years now. Yeah. You, or if you looked at someone that was 18 when you were 14, you're like, damn, that's an old guy. Yeah. Right? And now, like, as life just flies by in front of you, 20 years is a good chunk. Tell you the truth, it feels like six years. Damn, you know, it really just, does, just goes like that. You know, I'll think of laying on this greasy carpet in my first garage. I can tell you how it smelled. I could tell you that I probably have the piece of wood I'd rest my head on because I didn't have a lift <laughs> and I was building my first bike. And uh, it feels like yesterday. For real. And I kicked that bike for two weeks straight. It was a shovel head with a magneto and my leg bruised from the inside out from the muscle flexing so much. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I learned a shit ton in that two weeks about like timing and tuning. You know, I'm not a big dude and yeah. I like magnetos. So I got no spark assistance from a battery. I had to really learn how to tune my bike, super ease and linkers yeah. and 
uh, my Coonies and SUs. I've had them all on old bikes just because mm-hmm. I was trying to find that that thing, that that startup, that easy thing, but a little bit of performance. But like that was just all me in my garage and like calling a dude at a machine shop I knew, mm-hmm. calling people that weren't into bikes, that were into cars. You know, it was yeah the path of... It, this this whole thing that you're even here that this even exists whatever I do yeah it's um it's like uncanny it's mm-hmm. like a weird it's like it's just weird because I don't yeah I don't feel like you 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 plan this you just chase what felt good it's straight up you know what I mean straight up I, I never meant to be a pro skater you know I really didn't I just like you just jumped on one day and I I dug it you know I I like the way I always say it like the way it sounded. Yeah. You know, people sometimes say, why a knucklehead or why an XLCH? Well, you're on top of one. It makes a certain sound. Mm-hmm. I like the way shit sounds. Yeah. Um, that's why I started skating. You told me I was going to be a pro skater. Absolutely not. There's no way. Those dudes are gods and superheroes. Mm-hmm. And with the bike thing, you know, it was that little 4Q bike with the twisted pipes. It was easy for people to say, oh, the knucklehead says 4Q, which you know and knew what it meant at the time, uh, aside from Vietnam veterans and homeless people because they had rid it on something to... I don't know what it so is. So it's fuck you, you know, 4Q. Oh. So like it's an old punk song, okay. but before in Britain, you know, 4Q, you okay. know, 4Q. So so uh, my mentor, Moochie, this old dude, he, the first time I met him, he goes, oh, 4Q, I had that on my bike. Nice. Like, Bullshit. You're full of shit. I didn't know him very well. Yeah. Shows me this old picture and on his oil bag, he had this little 4Q. And I go, yeah, you know what it means. He goes, yeah, fuck you. You know, so <laughs> he goes, we used to write it on binders in school. If you didn't know the answer to a test and you didn't like that teacher, you'd put a 4Q. They didn't know what it meant. So, but that little bike, you know, uh, the little 4Q bike, that was just trying to make a weird little bike. I, I was influenced by, um, remember Chica? Yeah. And then, um, um, uh, at the time it, it was Chica. And then, um, he's this badass Japanese dude in the desert. Um, zero engineering. Remember that guy or that he was on the early biker build offs. I feel like a dude. What was his name? Um, Shinya. Man, I don't, yeah. I don't know if I'm recalling that one. Yeah, he's the the only Japanese dude. It, like, the one dude goes to get inspired at the strip club. It's maybe versus Billy Lane or something. Okay. And he goes to the art gallery, or he goes to a museum, and he's like, hmm, like, looking at color. It's really cool. Like, it's just oh, like... Oh, shit, I must have missed that. Yeah, I, I feel like I've watched yeah. all of them. Yeah, Shinya, he put, like, the uh, manifold on the side of his bike for an exhaust. I think it was a knucklehead. But I didn't go super deep down those things, but... Uh, I saw those zero bikes, but they, I was like, I want it to be like a chopper zero bike. And that's how that thing became Mm -hmm. it. And then it, you know, got on him. Some dude showed up to shoot a photo of it. So how, like when you were, you know, in the, when did you get your first bike? Like in 98, was it? 98. Yeah. So what was like the, what made you go? I want to do this. You know what I mean? I had a, um. I mean, was skateboarding at the time, was it just like kind of like a well-oiled machine or was it kind of... Let me think. So I'm going to be talking about yeah. you wasn't into all the shows and like the... The contest. The contest yeah. and stuff, you know. I had done the, all that X Games stuff and it even came here and that was cool. You know, Tony Hawk and I are skating right across the bay. Mm-hmm. I saw him do that first 900. Damn. Just bonkers, right in front of my face, you know, right there. But uh, when you're a pro skater, I grew up... 13 years old, 12 years old with the paper out, right? Mm -hmm. Load up the bike, get up in the morning. And then at like 14 or 15, my brother moved out and left, left a little scooter. So I put the papers in the back. He could wheelie. It was a Riva jog or something. (laughs) I crashed it so many times, but I always had a job. And then, uh, we'd have little odd jobs in the summer and I liked having my little money. Mm -hmm. So when you start being a pro skater, I was uh, working as a landscaper the day I turned pro, like the day I had my first pro model. You know, it was I still wanted a job because mm-hmm. I liked just you got to do something, yeah. being productive. So, yeah, just being productive and like you know, dude, when your uncle's telling you how like how hard he works and shit, and you're like, oh, I do bong rips on the couch all day. I'm a pro skater. Yeah, it would. That's not me. Mm. No shade thrown at anyone. If you, that, it just didn't. I wasn't. What into year did it. you turn pro? 
uh, probably like 93 or 93. four. Yeah. So I was like, uh, graduated high school in 91, missed my graduation to go on tour with yeah. real skateboards as an amateur. But, uh, that's how like that thing started. Um, I forget the question you asked me. Oh, like how that kind of transpired from pro skating to... You got time on your hands, Yeah, right? You can't skateboard all day. You're going to kill your body. Mm -hmm. And I had a vert ramp inside my house. So my buddies would get off work or whatever, and uh, three or four o'clock would roll, roll around, and they're getting off work, and they want to skate the ramp. Mm. But I woke up at seven o'clock. So I started going to school, took photography classes mm -hmm. at like community college. That's how I learned to paint. That's yeah. how I learned welding and mechanics. But so you did that before you even wanted to go down the bike path? I did the, um, yeah, mechanics and uh, welding, two years of like body and paint. Mm -hmm. And then uh, photography. I took his, you know, these other like history and art classes too. Mm -hmm. I was just like a little scrub down at the community college you know just like got to do something but then i would also have like i worked at a wood shop for a little while um but the time on your hands thing is uh i had it so i was like man i need to do something and i was helping with two kids in the in the worst neighborhood that i lived in down there and uh they started to grow up and they started to get into trouble and i had a lot of time on my hands then because i was like taking them to school and doing yeah. homework with them and i wasn't doing that and I had bought this basket case off the front lawn because I just, I wanted a bike. I had mm -hmm. a, I had a truck, an old 38 Chevy in Jason Jesse's garage. And he had two choppers right there. You know, I just, he'd go upstairs or disappear. And more than anything I learned in that garage is I would look at cool shit. Yeah. And you're a kid, you know, you're, you're red blooded American. You look at a pan head and you yeah. go, you, that's the shit. You look at his Chevy Lowrider and you're like, man, that's the shit. Yeah. But we weren't getting shit done. I'd drive an hour and a half each way and we were just eating sandwiches and cracking jokes and cutting farts or whatever, <laughs> you know? So eventually when I got uh, out of that garage, I got the truck home and started messing with that. I had already had my eye on some choppers or mm -hmm. like, I want a chopper. You know, I just. What was the scene like though? Did, was there a scene connected to it at all? At the time, there was Jason and Cole Foster and Salinas. Mm -hmm. This is what I knew. Yeah, yeah. But first time I go to, uh, where's the motorcycle shop? The first place I went was Harley Davidson in Oakland. And I was like, well, this, I'm at the wrong place. Mm -hmm. You can't even buy 50 weight here right now, you know, or whatever <laughs> it was. I said, probably something for a 69 shovel head. And they looked at me like, we don't even sell chains. So I went to Sonny Barger's old shop, which was flashes or Oakland custom at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I remember I needed the, the cups for a frame I'd bought. And that, and that's when I, I had a old fifties uh, panel truck at the time, a suburban. And they, the dude comes out, this guy, Guinea, he's real famous, H a notoriously hard ass. <laughs> and he looks at the panel truck and he's oh, it's a nice truck. Goes, Let me see the frame. It's a straight leg frame, 55. And he has a nice frame tell you what leave the truck and the frame here we'll put your cups in for you fucking with me testing me it's in east oakland man yeah. in the fucking hood across from the clubhouse and i was like looked down and i was like i think i'm good and that's when he's like take some all thread and some washers and some nuts and tighten them up and squeeze them in mm -hmm. and i was like the fuck does he mean you know <laughs> but then you <clears throat> made short work of that once that happened but that's that's kind of how it started but after kind of being such a clueless idiot inside Jason's garage mm -hmm. back then. But like, I also saw what Cole Foster was doing and the metal work yeah. and how far he was taking it. And with a hundred percent respect to Cole, cause he gets down as hard as anyone. It wasn't quite my style. It was just so polished. Yeah. And, um, but it was right there, you know, I just, there's no way you're like looking at Picasso, you exactly, know, you're like, yeah. so I, I need to do my finger painting for a while. So I went in my garage and I just started buying parts, you know, here in Oakland, it was easy and had to figure out how to put that thing together. Mm -hmm. And it took two years. And yeah. the, did you have anything to ride while you're doing it? Or was it just that? I might've had a Honda CB 350. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, 
what ended up happening, it was pretty cool, man. This was like eBay had just started, right? Yeah. And so I had my bike almost complete, but I was really struggling with the clutch. And uh, for any old bike head, they'll understand what I'm about to say is I had a generator shovel, which um, a pan head transmission and engine has a certain shaft in the transmission. It's mm -hmm. a short shaft. Generator shovel has a mid shaft, right? And then a later cone shovel has a longer shaft. I had a pan head transmission behind my generator shovel because I didn't want these little ears that the other yeah. ones had, had the wrong shaft. So every time I'd go to start the thing, it sounded like fucking a war, you know, just like, <laughs> and I was like, man, what the fuck? And I'd shut it off. I think I thought I was killing my bike. I just had the wrong shaft in there. Mm -hmm. I needed the mid one. So everything was just rubbing on everything and all fucked up. And then my belt was out of a line. So that took, I would like, you know, when you're learning something, you get so defeated so quick. You wake up like today's the day. Yeah. Two yeah. weeks later, you're just like, what the fuck is wrong? And someone on the phone would be like, well, sounds like you have it all dialed because I didn't know. I rode it up to this coffee shop and this dude goes, old biker dude, uh, forget his name. He, he's gone. But he goes, you might have the wrong shaft in your transmission. It was like pff, light bulb. <laughs> but that's how it was in the beginning because here in Oakland, there was zero scene, yeah. especially on this side of Oakland. And even those early bikes I took out to Flash's shop, you know, they were, they'd go, cool. Yeah. You got mechanical brakes. You know, they make disc brakes now. No one was like super gassed they up They didn't get it. it. Yeah. Well, they got it, but they'd been there, done that. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, like I remember he's like, that's a single down tube 96 inch shovel head right there with a the dual disc brakes up front. That's the shit. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> doesn't look like the shit to me <laughs> now i'd buy that thing in like a quick second but thunder max is and has been my go-to for my fuel injected harleys since 2015 the t-max module is designed to provide your fuel injected harley with proprietary auto-tune technology allowing you the ability to add future performance upgrades to your motorcycle without having to go to a dyno for tuning these tuners are worth their weight in gold Head on over to thunder-max.com to get yourself dialed in with the T-Max tuner and drop the fast life offer code, which will save you 10% on your purchase and give my guys a follow on the gram at ThunderMax EFI. Now let's get back to the show. You know, it was just, uh, it was such, uh, in, a, in a very cool way, it was my path mm -hmm. and it was a real slow path at first, but I think that's when I fell in love with it because every victory was huge. Like I remember I got two clean white t-shirts with, you know, chili stain, coffee stain or whatever that were gone, yeah. put them out on my workbench and I disassembled that transmission and I had the book, you know, I had the manual, I still have that one with the grease stains from yeah. that day. And I scattered my transmission and then I had the new short shaft here and I just scooted everything over and put it all together. I still have that transmission and mm -hmm. still runs good. Damn. But like, that's how, then it was moments of just diving in head first. And then you'd meet people that you looked up to and you'd be like, Hey man, you ever rebuilt your transmission? And they're like, fuck no. Like I have Carlos do that for me. And yeah. I'm like, Oh, okay. Like I'm in, like I'm, I'm starting to fucking feel confident about yeah, what you've learned how to yeah. do. It. Yeah. And that's how the paint thing came along is, um, there was this dude manual in Salinas that painted, I think for Cole, some definitely Jason and j just the funniest, coolest dude. And, uh, I saw him painting outside one day and I was like, what the fuck? Like a good paint job. Uh, it's a red candy paint job. And I was just like over gold. And I was like, man, that looks so badass just moving the gun back and forth. You know, I got to learn. I took, signed up for the paint class at the community mm -hmm. college, but that was deep, you know, four nights a week, like a four hour class for two years to get the certificate. Yeah. Um, I'm holding a gun. I'm using the best 3M and PPG Euro downdraft booth, you know, like in the suit. Professional. Yeah. Yeah. With the, with the air, but the teacher would always pull me aside and be like, try this booth our old you know uh what's it called like a side draft booth or yeah, when yeah. it's at the end cross flow or something. cross flow yeah and he's like that's the way we used to do it take the air suit we didn't have the hookup or you don't have it like i go you guys used to paint 
without a mask? He's like, what the fucking cigarette in your mouth? <laughs> In your garage with your garage cracked open and two box fans. He's, I've done that. Yeah. And he said, he goes, uh, he showed me some car from the Oakland Roadster show in, in like the late sixties. And I see that thing. And he goes, I know that guy. He painted it in a single car garage with a joint in his mouth with no respirator. And I was just like, damn. But like, and that was a hard shit back in the day. They were breathing the enamels and yeah, fucking lacquers. lacquers and shit. Yeah. But you know, when you start to hear that shit, you just have that thing where you're like, I can do this. It's not, it's kind of like when you learn things by the book, then you don't know you don't know the the, the book of what you can get away with, right? right. And so I, I don't know if it's better to learn it that way or not, like yeah. the way you learned. But you know, I grew up in a shop where that's what we were doing, like plastic up on the wall, yeah. fuck, the, throw the water down. Yep. Fan doesn't work anymore, so we go buy a box fan from Walmart. Yep. And you know that's where the, the shop that I first started in paint. I was forced to sand cars as right. a kid because my dad needed cheap labor. Right, you know what I mean. So, um, but yeah, dude, I've I've painted in the most wildest shit I've ever you know craziest shit before. Right, you know, and uh, it's never necessarily garnered a worse or better paint right. job. Right. Um, it's just like when you have all the shit, it's just easier. It's right. faster. It's, totally. It, it just rolls. You know totally. what I mean. Totally. Totally. So, yeah, it's it's a. Uh, same vibe, man. I, uh, like I told you before we started the camera, I was painted, you do uh, two coats of clear and you put them on right and you don't sand and polish. Mm -hmm. This guy, uh, he'd made AC Cobra aluminum bodies by mm -hmm. hand. Uh, tig, uh, sorry, um, um, oxyacetylene welded aluminum, yeah. right? All hand finished. He, this guy, Stuart Hall, he taught, I don't know why, at night at the college. And when it was time to bodywork that thing, it was the skim coat, you know? And then mm. he would paint it, and it was perfect. So the first car I painted was a little Fiat, and uh, someone I was working with, there's three of us doing it, had leaned on the car to wipe something with a dirty hand. So we're painting this thing, and we get to the hood last, and poof, there's just a perfect handprint. And I see the dude looking through the booth window, and he shuts it down. He's like, start over tomorrow. Damn. I just paint the whole start completely over. So the first tank I ever dripped, I was like, well, start Damn. over. And my <laughs> friend, I told my friend, maybe it's the dude manual. He's all, hey, bro, just uh, wet sand that shit and polish it. And I go, what do you mean? And he's just like, what the fuck do you mean? You learn like a military way of doing oh. it. <laughs> but then, you know, like with the bikes, I learned just in the garage. Yeah. The the way we you know most of us learn but i mean thank god for that school you know all uh, all my skate friends and you might have heard me say this on something else like skaters love to party mm -hmm. i'm 27 28 years old prime time you know go out chase girls party mm -hmm. but that was expensive and i'm always been real frugal with my money so signing up for that class and having free material and being contained for those hours. I'd bring a tall can and I, we had like a little 15 minute drink. I'd smash the tall can, listen to some music and, you know, painting with a little buzz is yeah. a little bit better painter probably <laughs> after a little <laughs> steadier, but like, I'd just do that. And that was like my thing. I'd drive home and fucking do it all the next day and skate in the day, mm -hmm. skate my ramp and then go to school at night. So what, what did they have you doing? Like, what was like, if you're not like doing, uh, you know, going to do demos and things like that, what was, what was your jobs in the professional skate? Yeah, space? that's a good question for anyone that doesn't know that game in skating. Now you got the dudes that do contests mm -hmm. and then in all honesty, this will sound weird to people. Sometimes the most popular dude never enters a contest. Mm -hmm. He films a video part and it's insane. Right. He, he focuses it on that. He's not doing the same trick down the same thing every weekend to make his 10 grand or whatever. Yeah. With the monster sticker or whatever. He's in the streets with his filmer and a photographer trying to get a clip at a spot no one's ever seen. Little more rare and vert to be that way. But I learned real quick, shoot an ad for your sponsors, mm -hmm. be it Vans or Real or whoever. Make it look good. Make sure it's perfect. It's the flip is perfect or the way you're grabbing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had a really cool friend, Gabe, that shot all the ads and then do interviews for the magazine. Dude, you sell more boards right then than if you get fifth place at the X Games, right? Mm. Who remembers that? 
Yeah, because it was Thrasher magazine and all the other little, yeah, you know, the ones that we would get back in the day too. You know, Slap, what I'm saying? Trans World, Trans World, all those magazines. You know, you get it a was cut. Trans World. That was the main one. Yeah, Trans World and Thrasher were the. Yeah. There's like uh, down south was Trans World and up here was Thrasher. For real, it's kind of a little you know thing, kind of. It's always, like, had, it's always had a there's all yeah there's always yeah. some beef but you know i got a cover of thrasher a cover of slap never had a trans world cover was supposed to do an interview and i just kind of slept on it but you know the editor of thrasher was like my mom's boyfriend and one yeah. of my best friends so yeah there there was some uh, hostility there but when you do that stuff everyone that's like burned into your brain this like oh that photo of so-and-so doing a front side ollie on the brick banks in brooklyn or wherever it mm -hmm. is like there's those moments and i realized real quick because i'm not going to beat tony hawk i'm not going to beat bob burnquist um and then there was just those dudes they were machines at contest yeah. so there's 60 of you the goal was to get top 10 so then you made the finals once i got 10th i was like fuck it, I'm good, you know, and then hopefully I got, I think once I qualified first once or twice and probably the best in one of those big contests was like fifth, mm -hmm. bro, I was happier than shit, you know, <laughs> maybe that you get a thousand bucks, but it's work, you know, you got to fly, I remember flying to Cleveland once and I was just like, it kept raining and then the ramp would dry, it was raining and I was just like, fuck am I doing? Yeah. For what? To t tell someone to, they say dropping in now you have 45 seconds to perform the crowd doesn't care mm -hmm. you know they want to see tony hawk or maybe he's not even there they just don't care it's vert they want to see whoever's on the video game you yeah know I mean? it just you know it was just one of those things where i was like this doesn't make sense i think about it with choppers unfortunately like you know there's a bike show nearly every month and um, every weekend I'll be honest yeah i was gonna i was gonna say it and then i was like well maybe i'll pull back but <laughs> For me to put gas in the van and to show up for everyone, like I've always wanted to go to Mama Tried and I've never gone. Mm -hmm. You know, like I don't really love to go to a show without a bike, mm -hmm. you know, and like buddies will fly there and just party for the weekend and that's cool, but like you want to kind of show your thing. Mm -hmm. For me to get out there, that's like a couple of grand by the end of it, you know, mm -hmm. hit some snow in a van that's a fucking not four wheel drive. Like, you know, the whole thing yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking you got a couple mountains you got to pass. Yeah. Either. And like I'm saying, dude, I grew up with very little. So like my, my little shop and my things like this is my shit. This is my future. And this is what I do. And it's a priority going to the show could, um, what's it called? Not sabotage that, but like mess up mess, you know, put me behind yeah, financially. Yeah. And, I could sell more shirts and I could sell more stuff, but like, that's not who I want to be either. Yeah. Like my main goal is to, uh, be inspired to build bikes. And you know, on Monday you're inspired and sometimes on Tuesday you're not. Yeah. yeah. So like the more, the less I surround myself by it, the more inspired I usually am because when this is my, that my caveat to me right mm -hmm. here, I figured this out two years ago when I got into this shit, I feel like it was just me. I was inspired by Cole and Jason, but then I'm in my garage. And so it wasn't like a party thing or a social thing. And I didn't know a magazine would ever shoot. It was just for me. And that's kind of how it always sits with me. Like the more I'm around people in the scene, the more I'd like want to come back and critter in my hole or get on my bike and like go on one of my little rides. I like, yeah. Like I, people lone wolf or loner it's like real romantic it's not even that there's something wrong with me yeah. like i just like to be kind of like you know there's no tunes on right now because we're doing this but there's always tunes on and you know like when the culture wall album came out i was like man this is fucking good yeah i want to build a bike to this you know like that kind of stuff or you see a movie or a documentary and you're like i'm kind of fired up right now yeah i saw a band the other night and i was like man i'm kind of like i want to go home and work in the shop right now yeah. that's what i'm always looking for and that makes sense I, i've actually been going down that rabbit hole too you know and you know being trying to find ways to constantly inspire you to get to be creative like it's not like a it's like we're always playing these tricks with us trying to 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 get a hold of the switch right to come on and off right right and because you know like man i don't have anything going on i wish that thing would come on right in here and i would just have this 
something would come out. Right. But also uh, to your note about like your, your local routes around here, it's like, I feel like when you have a city like this and you have vistas that the, the city has, yeah, you know, like it's, it's, it's always humbling. You know what I mean? It's true. So it's like anytime, like, you know, whether it be your ego or your, you know, it's just like a ride and a view can change your perspective on everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I was a uh, friend's kind of going through some shit mentally and, uh, his problems were bigger than all of our problems, but they weren't. And I said to him, I was like, Hey man, we're, it sounds so cliche, but we are grains of sand on this spinning dust bowl. Mm -hmm. And what you just said was so, uh, cool. I go up on that hill and I see how many fuckers live right here. Mm -hmm. And I see that bridge that they built and how beautiful it is to the city. And then I see the golden gate bridge and I see, you know, SF and I'm just like, we ain't shit. You know, we, we play one on TV, you know, like, you know, I, I've been putting stunt man on occupation. Like I just had to get a new passport. It says <laughs> stunt man. Cause like no one knows who the stunt man is. I just think yeah. is, and I was kind of at one point. Uh, but I just, I, I never know what to put on there, yeah. you know, like welder, fabricator, painter, bike builder, skateboarder, yeah. like. It's always so weird. It's but, like calling yourself an artist. It's like something it's, you feel like somebody else should do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you're up on that hill and you, you're like. First of all, usually I say, man, I'm a lucky fucker to live here. Mm -hmm. Then you see my property taxes and you say, you, you unfortunate fucker <laughs> that you have to live here. <laughs> but, uh, but it's a really beautiful place and there's a lot of beauty to be pulled from it. And there's a lot of cool shit going yeah. on here. Dude, the graffiti out here is so badass. It's pretty bonkers. And even when like I, I came in off uh, across the San Rafael Bridge, yep. is that what it is? And there was like some mill looking thing that was just tattooed in graffiti oh yeah and i was like that's fucking rad and yeah. it's like I, I don't know i love that shit when you come yeah. to uh, hell when i was coming into uh, portland i last time i rode around it, i never saw the city and i was like fucking rad city man. yeah tucked Absolutely. on a hill just you know nice little vibe to it it's like i i love that shit man yeah you know and that's you know that's the thing with the machine uh like we talked about earlier uh, I have a friend that walk, started walking everywhere and he's like, dude, have you ever seen this house down there? Like he's at a different yeah. pace, right? On the old bike, I'm thinking about gas every 70 miles too. So mm -hmm. I, I still look at a paper map a lot of the time just to be like, because the digital one doesn't make sense sometimes, but it makes you look at things a different way. And uh, that, you know, skateboarding, you can only skate so fast, but like when we'd skate through the city, you see things in a different perspective. Yeah. And as soon as you travel a bunch and you come back to your spot, you either probably dig it or don't. Mm -hmm. Right. I always like coming back here up until little, you know, people drive like fucking trash here on the wrong side <laughs> of the road and the hyphy movement, the doors wide open. Like yeah. it's all good. Express yourself. But there's things that are, it's just so dangerous. You know, dudes doing 110 through stop signs. Mm. That stuff will get to you when you're, when you're, pulling up to it and you're like damn i just i'm toast i'm done i can't i yeah, can't I can't do nothing about that that that's a caprice you know <laughs> that shit is like every once in a while if i come home and i'm like man real sick trip and then that happens you're just like get me out of here like yeah. take me to the mountains or that's a bummer like i never never thought i'd say that shit i always feel like when i go to certain places like new york or la and honestly here when i'm closer to the city not like out in the in the valley there i always feel like i'm plugged into something more energetic more electrifying yeah and an you know being from texas you know out in the center of the country it's like you know i come out here and i'm ready to go and then yeah. you know you got all the guys that are in california like on a different pace right you know what I'm saying? Right. it's like fucking let's do it you know what yeah. i mean so um but yeah man the the vistas i hear I, what you said about the speeds that you go it's like i'm starting to get to that point too where like I start to notice things differently. Like, like I drive through cities now when I have free time to just see if there's a cool spot. I might be able to shoot pictures at one time right. or maybe me and the boys will ride through here next year. Right. And we'll get this spot. You yep. know what I mean? I did that at Kansas city in Iowa. I mean, on my Iowa trip in January, I was like, never been there. And I never even went to Kansas city cause I found what they call the West bottoms. Right. And it's just like this historical area that's ran down, but it's like, Art's taking over. Oh, neat! And it's it's pretty wild. So if people listen, like go go look at it. Go go look that shit up. It's like right. 
it's literally like the bottom and then Kansas City's up on a fucking cliff. Whoa. And there's like this long bridge that looks kind of like an aqueduct that comes down to it. Yeah. And all these buildings look like they're, you know, vacant and shit. But then you look at the bottom, one's like a theater and one's like a like a Whoa. metal bar. And yeah. the one's, you know, got a little bit of something going in there. There's one bike shop. Looks like they fucking, they're rough. You yeah, know what I mean? Kind yeah, of shit. Yeah. But it's just got a vibe. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. No, I, I know like... uh the minute I would leave this, like, dude, I can go get the best barbecue in the world right mm-hmm. down the way. Like, I love food. Yeah. First, I'm skinny as hell, but I love food. And I love music. You know, like I saw Tommy Guerrero, the skater, play. Just got the call. Hey, bro, I'm playing at this little bar up the street. That's when I wanted to go home and work on the bike. Nice. I'm watching him play, room full of people just fucking vibrating, pulsating. And mm-hmm. I'm like, this is fucking sick. That took me... Rachel and I went, took me eight minutes to get there. Yeah. You know, I would miss that. Uh, The city does kind of keep you young, but man, I'll like throw my back out or hurt myself and I'll be shuffling around. I'm like, fuck, I hope I don't like no one steps to me (laughs) right now. You know that feeling? Cause you're in the middle of that moving thing. But uh, that's when, yeah, when, when my mom moved to Oakland and we moved here, uh, I learned a lot, you know, you learn how to carry yourself and you learn how to like kind of go with the flow because it's moving. And if you're not, when y'all moved here, did you move to San Francisco first and then over to here? She moved, uh, my dad moved to the suburbs. This is, uh, we're from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but, uh, yeah, my dad moved to the suburbs and my mom, uh, she moved to Oakland found a place, then moved to San Francisco. So we did do some time in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. In fact, I got vibe surfing the other day and the guy's like, where are you from? And I'm like, I'm from Oakland. And he's like, that's not San Francisco. And and I was like, fuck dude, do I have to tell you every address? I Like you're just acting like a cop out here. But we did spend a lot of time in the city uh, in San Francisco and it was cool. Like, like you said, graffiti, like I love like eighties graffiti or what I call civilian graffiti when someone would just be just like bombs. Ronald Reagan is a communist and right. have some, you know, like just like <laughs> weird political shit too. Yeah. But, um, you know, that and punk rock was really vibrating in the city at that point too. And, um, but yeah, Oakland was, uh, my mom moved here when I was 13. So mm. yeah, that I remember watching that stuff and, you know, you had the skate ramp in the house. Like, yeah how did that come about? Like, did she, did you already have a pass for skating and she was trying to reinforce that or did it just kind of, no, it was weird. Like this is where you go. Like if you look at your life and you go like, man, how did these things happen? Yeah. Like it, someone's pushing you somewhere. Right. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I started skating and I started skating at my dad's house in the suburbs and you build a ramp in the suburbs and the neighborhood complains and it gets torn down tried to build a ramp at my dad's house the neighbor said yes then the, we're in court over the thing my mom always lived in like i live in a corner store now she lived in one corner store in the city she was just looking for low rent places where she wasn't going to get jacked yeah. so she lived in an old brewery the hams brewery mm. had the vats where they made the beer and the, all the punkers illegally squatted in the vats well next to it you could rent like a fat space, like 2000 square feet for 300 bucks. Yeah. But you had a urinal to go to the bathroom in, right? Mm. It was like, depending on which bathroom you got in your space, yeah. hers happened to have 15 toilets in it. <laughs> so we just had, and like a, it's just the coolest place. But so she always lived in weird places. Then she's living in an old bar mm-hmm. with no windows. Mm-hmm. And she's like, man, this is kind of dark and gloomy. And, uh, she heard about this spot in West Oakland. It was a giant ironworks building and for dude pennies, you know, $800, you got 5,000 square feet with 60 to 80 foot ceilings, but it's just a box. Mm -hmm. You know, they had separated an old foundry into these blocks. So like our neighbors, what my one neighbor was a piano mover. The other was like 30 punkers with crazy structures, like straight burning man inside their house. And then there was a, uh, scrapyard here, you know, indoor scrapyard. Yeah. It's, uh, Cypress auto supply. It's still around, but the building's gone. But so we had that spot and we had all this open space and she's like, well, you, you guys can build a ramp in here. My brother skated and 
her boyfriend skated. So it was just kind of on, mm-hmm. but it wasn't, uh, the chicken or the egg thing. She wasn't like, here's a spot where you can build a ramp. She was just like, she weaves and she makes these crazy huge weavings. Mm-hmm. And she's like, man, I could make the world's biggest weaving and hang it in this place. Yeah. Um, it was just kind of, it went with her vibe, man. She fall. she's, uh, she's not an anarchist, but she doesn't follow the rules. Yeah. And, uh, but man, that first time we came, like my, I got jumped. My brother was in the liquor store. He came out and saved my ass, but I gave a kid the finger for trying to like take me down on my skateboard. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I didn't, I was a white boy and an all black neighborhood. It was just, uh, I learned real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Gun, gun pointed to my head early on. Um, but then once the neighborhood, once they knew, and I've said this in other interviews. Yeah, Once yeah. they knew we had a TV, a skater with kid, yeah. rabbit ears. You know, it was just the living. We just had a lot more space. Mm-hmm. Was the thing, but like we froze our asses off every winter, and every summer we were in a tin building boiling. Mm. So it wasn't uh, ideal, but I wouldn't trade it for the yeah, world. You know what's funny about that? Like those those circumstances. Like I've always thought, looking back at my last you know, I'm 40 this year. So my last 20 years of being a official adult and I always think about some of the worst places I've ever been. And I always think like, well, man, this, this one aspect of that was pretty rad though. Yep. And so it's almost like you, yeah, you want to get out of these spots and kind of grow and get and do better. But man, like I really appreciated those times, yep. the simpler times, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Or, or, or just where I could be in my head at that time. I didn't have all the responsibility or, right you know, or to learn this for the first time again, kind of thing, you know, I was listening to a podcast with flea from the red hot chili peppers, you Mm. know, cause he's kind of into bikes right now. And I was, Oh, he is. Yeah. He bought a, uh, he bought a pretty sick chopper from, uh, this dude in Japan, but he, I saw a clip of him riding it and everything. It just seemed like a sick dude, you know? And I listened to this thing and he's been on heroin and through Mm -hmm. all kinds of shit. And he said the hardest times in his life made him exactly who he is. Like they made, they formed the best things about him, mm. you know? And I was like, yeah, that's a good, it's kind of true. You know? Yeah. Everything, uh, our one friend says nothing cool is easy. And it's as funny as that sounds. If you really break it down, you know, yeah. like nights before bike shows or whatever, when you're just like, I'm over it and your hands are bleeding and your eyes fucking sting and all that stuff, you know? You, yeah. Yeah all of a sudden you're, you have one of these in your hand and you're at the show and you're looking at your bike and you're just like, I did it. Yeah. Like that feels good. And all your buddies are kind of in that same boat. Those are, that's the best moment. Yeah, it is, man. I've had, I, you know, at one point in time, I didn't really know how to manage my time very well. So it was like overload of work. I was, I didn't know how to say no. I didn't know how to turn things away. And, uh, yeah, it'd be like run until 3am every day, go home, wake back up, you're back at the shop at 10 and it's grind, grind, grind. No time off for a month yeah. and a half straight, two months just to have a weekend off yeah. at a show. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. And I couldn't do it now. I don't think I have it in me anymore, but I still think about those times. And like, I, I'm amazed that I was able to do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? But also it was like, you put this shit on such a, a pedestal that like when you went there, like you were, I just plugged in more, if you will. Yeah. You know, like you, you appreciated it more because you worked so hard to be there. Totally. So I don't know. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, it's the not one more cliche thing, skating, you know, uh, I've heard like famous people that don't skate say this, we try and we fail and we try and we fail and mm-hmm. we try. And we, I mean, dude, I tried five forties for years, could spin them perfectly. Mm-hmm. I was too chicken shit to put it down. Then I started putting it down, shooting out and breaking my ass. And then one day I landed one on accident. It's in a video. It's in a real video. No one knew. I just played it off. Like, woohoo, yeah. I meant to do that. Yeah, I meant to do it. Which I did, kind (laughs) of, but I kind of didn't either. I didn't think you would. Tried way harder. But you get so used to failing, you know, Mm -hmm. you learn that lesson. Like, no one's going to, I would think sometimes, like, maybe I'll just land, Mm -hmm. you know? Every once in a while, you might get lucky and land, but like you got to put in the work, you got to take the slam. Yeah. And that's, I think that's why sometimes uh, skaters become like businessmen or own big companies or are successful in other things because from the age of 12, you've just been like trying, trying, yeah. trying, trying. I, I, it's a, it, the generation I see now, like so plugged in and 
the video game thing or like shoes like as much as I like like uh you know I've designed a shoe for vans and all that stuff and got to help with clothing stuff or the whites boots things amazing uh I hate streetwear <laughs> like I, I don't get it you know it's mm-hmm. like if it's not built for something what's the point mm-hmm. you know like shit a leather jacket was for like riding to keep mm-hmm. you safe it just is kind of corny to me and sorry if I offend anyone. It just, I don't quite get it, you know? And now I see even more like it's just a consumer. We're losing kids to this stupid shit, you know, Mm -hmm. to just stuff. Yeah. That's a hundred percent accurate. It's, um, you know, on the thing you were talking about with skaters, uh, the whole trying over and over and, you know, I never in my life landed a three sixty flip, but I probably, spun that motherfucker around <laughs> at least 10,000 times. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and on that notion that it makes someone better, it's like, they'd always say like growing up to like kids that were in sports, they earned, they learned discipline. Right. But I think kids that skated and took it seriously, they learned a different type of discipline. Yeah. Like, like, uh, you know, not a discipline to authority because they were their disciplinary. Right. You know what I mean? That's a good point. Yeah. So, I like that. I like no coach. That I got to right. do this in myself. Right. And I think that's why you see a lot of people either either super talented, and like I said, I'm getting this through watching Epically Later, right. seeing all these skaters that I grew up watching, and seeing the ones that that have gone on to make other businesses or you know uh, mentor other kids coming yep. up in skating, or people that just went off the rails. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. So, no, I I think sometimes the coach thing, you start doing it for your coach, right? Yeah. Like Jake, that dude. He, trust me, I wanted to impress him. I wanted to like do an air higher than him when he could do an air higher than me. I want mm-hmm. to be like flex on him a little bit. Yeah. But then I would skate by myself a ton too and just try shit. You know, I remember knocking my tooth out Thanksgiving day, right in front of my mom, right when she pulled the Turkey out, she, uh, this one's fake, but I was just skating by myself, like trying yeah. to kick flip Indy over and over and over. And I did it. I was like, hey, mom, check it out. Let under rotated. Why am knock my tooth out? And you're like, fuck. But that was that stuff. It was for no one but myself. Yeah. And I think uh, I I should probably spend like a drive to L.A. and back breaking that one down in my head. But like what exactly that builds in you. Mm -hmm. But it's when you're doing it for the coach, I think eventually uh, when you get an older age, you probably lose that. When you don't have that person telling you, you're kind of lost. Yeah. I, I still have this this thing like of trying to impress myself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's what I think skater, that's what the mentality of skating, right? Cause yeah, you want to be able to do it for the homies whenever y'all go to the skate spot later. Right. But I mean, I started skating, I already had a car, so I was able to, you know, all the other dudes that were still, (laughs) I played basketball in high school and then I I quit in 11th grade and started skating. And so all the kids that were skating with me were in eighth grade. Right. But I was like, fuck, I want to be around people that are skating. Yeah. and then next thing you know, I'm the guy taking them to downtown Dallas yeah. at 3 a.m. Right. And I'm like, fuck, I'm going to get in trouble. Like, I got minors. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of a minor. Like, right, we're at 3 right. a.m., you know. Right. But some of the raddest things in my life, and I, I've talked about on the podcast before, were going to the downtown Dallas at 3 a.m. and skating till the sun came up and watching the world start to turn back on. That's cool. While we were sitting on top of a roof at a parking garage eating donuts from one of the places that opened at 5 a.m. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, man, like... You paint a good picture, dude. You're yeah. really good at that. Yeah. It, that's, I mean, I have almost the exact memory. Yeah. I can see exactly what you mm-hmm. uh, just spelled out, and it's beautiful. Yeah, dude, it was, it was amazing. But with that, you know, what I was getting to with that was um, I think a lot of those times of me trying to learn a trick or trying to get something down like that forced goal. Right. You know what I mean? Cause realistically it's a goal. I want to yeah, land this trick. I totally. want to, I want to clear that gap and yeah. things like that. And, um, you know, I think that's why I'm such a, I need a goal to chase. I need a right. thing to do. Yep. And sometimes that thing needs some inspiration to fuel it, to make yep. it happen. Right. And so it's like, you're finding all these different things about you. It's like, yep. it's like combustion. You need a little bit of air, a little yep. bit of gas yep. Yep. and then squeeze that shit together. Yep. You know Sometimes I mean? people will say like, Hey man, why do you do the born free show? You know, what, what are they doing for you? You know, I'm like, I, I like Mike and Grant, like mm-hmm. we've had our ups and downs, but I do respect them and they put on a hell of a show. And I've always said this, I can't even throw a barbecue at the house for 10 friends without yeah. fucking something up. Yeah. So respect to them. But the main reason I do it is because 
it's a push mm -hmm. and there's a date and you got to do it. Yeah. And you're going to look like a clown if your shit isn't right when yep. you get there. And that's, uh, there's a lot of people that just build bikes right before the deadline, mm -hmm. right? Or oh, my customer's on the fucking phone. You know, I gave the customer's cash back once, rolled his shit back to him. It's like, sorry. Yeah. You know, fuck it. You're not, I'm not your bitch. I'm working for you, but like yeah. this shit takes, takes time. But with the show thing, you're sometimes building a bike that you can't sell because it's too weird. You know, it's too crazy. <laughs> like you're trying to out fucking wow the next guy, yeah. especially with choppers. Uh, but that having that goal, like in the drawer, I save all the cardboard boxes and it says like fuel line, oil line, petcock, mm -hmm. uh, these nuts and bolts need this. And you're just, you just get cross to them out, dude, yeah. like with the orange bike, you know, I was early for the first time in my life for born free. Cause I wanted to ride there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I got to shake it down for a week. And about a week before I was like, there was that weird feeling where I looked at these pieces of cardboard and I was like, Hey, I'm, I'm done. Like I'm almost done. I get to like put little tchotchkes on here and like just dress this thing up or polish something. Or there was one little thing that wasn't quite right. I get to tweak on that right now. Yeah. That shit, that, that was like learning a skate trick. That's what I was about to say. Cause I was like thinking about that feeling while you were telling me that I was like, that's what it feels like to land something. Mm -hmm. Cause you work on it forever. And then finally, you know, like finally you got all the things checked off. Now you're opening the door, you're pushing it out, you're starting yeah. it. You're questioning yourself. Yeah. Man, should I ride this thing? Everything good? Yeah. Did I tighten that? Like, yeah. fuck, did I do yeah. this? And then you take it around the block and like, feels good. I'm going to go around a bigger block. Yeah. And then you start spiraling out, man. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, it's like, I remember it, you know, so many times in my life, I've, I've got to have that experience a lot of times with motorcycles. And uh, it is, it's, you're, you're chasing a high with that for sure. Big time. You know, I usually, with, with me, one of my things I used to inspire me is like, I have a very vivid imagination. Um, it's always helped me be creative and draw and things like that. So I can literally almost like a picture in my head, close my eyes and imagine what I think I look like ripping this bike that I'm not even done yet right. on PCH or across Arizona yep. or, you know, said place and said part of the country. Yeah. Right. And I end up chasing that idea, that dream. And that's kind of like my motivation to get to it. Right. So do you draw your bikes before you build them? Yeah. Yeah. 100% like color and everything. So what I do, what I started doing, I used to like try to just hand draw it. So it was all out of proportion, but now I got the iPad technology. Okay. And then I could just sketch the bike, the whole thing, and then I'll print it out and then I'll color it like with markers That's and it. shit. Yeah. And that way I can kind of get an idea of like what kind of color scheme, the balance of it. Cause you know, baggers and Dinas and FXRs and there's just a lot more color on it. Right. Than like, you know, your typical three piece chopper right. uh, frame kind of thing. Right. But um, yeah, I mean, I just, I like that because I have a old 1950 tanker desk in my garage. Mm -hmm. It's got I like to see, I, I'm a table junkie. Yeah. I'm going to get to that funny. real quick. Yeah, I got yeah. a table in my <laughs> shop that I painted certain bikes on that I feel like has something in it right. that I can't throw it away. Yep. I don't use it anymore. It's got, I, I literally throw my keys on it every day because yeah. I got better ones now, but yeah. that one I just can't get rid of. And this desk that I got in my garage, you know, I got a drawer, pull out all my markers and pull out paper and just start sketching. And I feel like I've sketched some of my best work in my life over the last four years I've had this table. Right. And so like now I'm like, fuck, I can never get rid of this thing. Yeah. You know, this is, it's yeah. like a placebo effect right, myself right, into right, I'm right. only allowed to draw on this table. Yeah, that's if super, would, Superman's cape right there. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, cool. So uh, I don't know. I, I try not to get all woo-woo with that shit, but right. it's like it does feel good to do that. You know, I, like to see the things. I mean, you got a lot of things in your shop, a lot of trinkets, a lot of, I'm assuming, memories. Yeah. You know, everything that gets hung on the wall, at least you had a memory hanging that motherfucker yeah, on the wall, totally. right? Totally. Totally. And when you surround yourself with that, when you see your shop going from the empty walls to, mm -hmm. you know, there's this, you got that, you got, and then you just walk into this, it, this inspiration of yeah. your, your history. It's you know so what I'm saying? true, man. It's uh, you got a fucking nice tank collection. Yeah. Going on, dude. I don't even do it anymore. I just, that's just from like over the years. And sometimes people be like, what's up with the tank wall? And I'm like, more than anything, it was just a place to put them. With over 20 years in business, custom dynamics, has built the largest product selection in the motorcycle lighting game. Superior lighting products supported by top quality customer service, all backed by lifetime warranties. 
I'm currently running Custom Dynamics all around on my Lowrider ST. Head on over to CustomDynamics.com where they have solutions for both early and late model motorcycles and give them a follow on the gram at Custom Dynamics. I went to a shop when I was younger and the guy had a big poster. He had a bunch of posters of himself on the wall. Mm -hmm. All his magazines and his, you know, lady blew him up. And I was kind of like, you know, there's a code in skating. You don't, um, when I was, you know, coming up, you didn't ride your own board mm -hmm. with your name on it. And you definitely didn't wear your own shirt. So if it was like a Mac shop, you'd like huge no, no. Yeah. Certain dudes would. And you're kind of like, well, that's that dude. Yeah. He don't get it. <laughs> um, and I remember I, I looked at this dude's shop and I was like, man, that's like a lot of pictures of yourself on the wall. Mm -hmm. And I kind of was like, I get it. Cause it feels good. You know, that mm -hmm. first magazine cover or whatever, but like you will rarely see me in 4Q gear and it's fucked. Cause I just made new hats and I, and they look good and I want to wear my 4Q hat. Uh. And you probably think I'm crazy for saying that, but it's like one of those things left over from skating where you like, don't blast yourself on yourself. Yeah. It's not yeah. like it says, like, you know, some of these guys have like Joe Blow choppers and it's a picture of Joe Blow and they're Joe Blow's wearing the hat. Yeah. Like sometimes that gets a little bit weird to me. But for me with 4Q, you know, it's like, it's just a 4Q hat, wear your damn yeah. hat. But uh, with my shop, I remember I seen that and I was like, well, I get it. You know, the dude's pumped on that cover and that article, but like, I kind of want to put stuff on my walls historic like the Sonny Barger and Terry the Tramp like those are all old Roth posters that were those guys are Oakland members mm -hmm. look up and like that's a piece of the history of my town mm -hmm. with the shit that I'm into and trust me I've been down here high and, or buzzed and got the lights dimmed perfect and I'm sitting in the corner and I tell her I'll be I'll be back up in 15 minutes sometimes it's three hours she's like well that was three hours yeah I watched three episodes of the Sopranos or whatever <laughs> but I'm just down here getting that those chills yeah and like man this week I want to knock out this this and this yeah I know what you're saying about the whole like uh you know putting yourself out there that way you know what I mean it feels yeah. weird uh I have I have in my studio, I have a picture of me and friends yep. on a bike trip. Hell yeah. And I have one picture that a photographer that we randomly ran into in uh, <sighs> Monument Valley. Okay, yeah. He shot my bike with me standing behind it. And yeah. I just, that's the only picture I really got yeah. in there. But um, but that's on a trip, a good time. Yeah, like kept so that, that's, we talk about the bike so much that it's like a joke now. You know, because it's the only bike I really ever built <laughs> <laughs> to certain people. And uh <laughs> And so that's why it's in there. I put things in there to make conversation. I got a huge fucking, like the size of your door poster of Harley Davidson and Marlboro Man. Yeah. There's a bunch of David Man stuff on one wall and some pictures that I actually took of other people yeah. on my travels. And just like when you're in there, you're in my space. Like, yeah. There's like, you know, that's like the only place I feel like I get to decorate, you know? Right. Can't do it at home. And then, um, but yeah, I, don't, I know what you mean about that. I remember I, <laughs> I told the story a lot too. I rode with Yellow Wolf once. Right. And uh, we were sitting at this little gas station, little taco kind of, you know, in the corner of the gas station thing. We we're all eating. And his ringtone was his own song. And it weirded me out. Right. Like, I was like, and I, what happened was that we're all eating. You know, I'm not trying to nerd out and like, yeah. oh, man, so what's it like to, you know, be a rapper? Yeah. Um, And then I'm just eating and then his phone goes off and I look up and I'm trying to make eye contact with somebody else. Like, Y'all get Isn't that weird? <laughs> yeah. You know? And nobody yeah. looked up. Like, it's like, you know, it's like. It, yeah. I was, I don't know. That's I've always thought that. I think that's the skater in you, to tell you the truth. But that, I mean, that's like a cool. I remember when then dudes started riding, like Mike Carroll or someone who I looked up to, started riding their own boards again. And I was like, all right, we've relaxed a little bit. Yeah. You know? That was. Where, a, do you, where do you draw the line between, like, <clears throat> these things that you develop in your head as a young man? Yeah, you know, and then when you add adulthood to it, it's a great. When question. you add when you add a wife or, yeah. or perhaps a kid to it, yeah, and then a credit score, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, where do you draw the line between what's, you know, we were talking about this before, what's selling out, what's um, what's acceptable to still right. be? That's a really great question because we all got to pay our bills, right? Yeah. Like, I have a mortgage. Um, and you say that sometimes, like 
I've never raffled a bike. And I remember at first I was like, man, this shit's going to ruin bike building mm -hmm. because for a hundred dollars you can win a bike. And if it fucking the front wheel falls off, you paid a hundred dollars for it. Yeah. It doesn't have a title or whatever, you know, like when that happened, I was a straight up hater. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is fucking whack. It's corny. Mm -hmm. They're getting too much money. Straight up calling myself out, I was just hating because yeah. I was like, you know, we have our little precious thing and it's got to stay this way. Don't wear your own shirt. All this stupid stuff that, yeah. you know, uh, that being said, people need to make money and it's a really quick way to triple your money. Mm -hmm. Um, right around that time I got a new customer that was like, bro, I want you to build me a couple bikes and I'm going to pay you and do you do your thing, do mm -hmm. your max 4Q thing. Just cosmic intervention, you know, where I didn't have to go down that road. Yeah. Um, that is a weird world that I believe in and I live in and I believe there's, you get led where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, and I wanted to touch on this, there's a lot of really talented chopper builders. There's this guy, Junior, Junior's Handmade. He's entered Born Free. He, he did well. Uh, he builds beautiful bikes. My friend Marcus, he builds uh, Terminal Speed. He's from Cleveland, but he lives up in the foothills now. Mm -hmm. Hell of talented. Builds his motors, gets down. Do they have the following that they deserve? Not yeah. really. But I don't even know what that means anymore, right? Because yeah. you could do exactly what I do and you could try to be a carbon copy. It's not going to work, right? Because mm -hmm. it, it already exists. So everyone's just kind of trying to figure it out. And I think everyone thinks everyone makes a lot more money than oh, they yeah. do. Life-changing moment for me, I did a Mountain Dew commercial. Jumped a skateboard through a window. I made 17 grand because mm -hmm. they played it during the Super Bowl. I went from having six hundred dollars in a bank account to seventeen grand. I heard about, about a house in Oakland that was twenty-seven grand. It had no roof on it. I bought that house, had a three hundred and fifty dollar mortgage for like whatever, five or fifteen years, it didn't matter. That changed my life forever. That that single moment. Because now I can own a house in Oakland and do what I love and not have to like worry quite as much. I just got to jump on it. Mm -hmm. You know, I just got to jump on that game. I was like into real estate and like, I knew what was going to happen in Oakland. I really did. It's the, how close it is to San Francisco. Yeah. San Francisco is full. They're going to come over here. Mm -hmm. I'm the first stop over the bridge. <laughs> it's, it's common sense. Yeah. But that, you know, that, uh, that hustle, you got a baby on the way and you see everyone, oh man, I got a 58 Impala, I got to sell it. Yeah. It's my fucking pride and joy. We've all seen our friends do that shit. For me, with merchandise or whatever, I just don't want it to be gross. Yeah. I don't want to be like shoving it down everyone's faces. I don't want to like just do a bunch of old logos out of an easy rider that, and you know, it's cool. Those are great logos, but like, for the most part, I did bite one old Easy Rider logo. But aside from that one, it's all original art. Um, that's just a little fluff that helps the chopper yeah. get built, right? But it's not, I'm not a, that's not what I do, you know? My priority is to build a bike and build it the best that I can mm -hmm. and make it look the way I like. There's so many dozens of guys that are better than me. I'll be the first one to tell you. Mm -hmm. Um I look up to so many, I look up to people way younger than me that are doing cool shit. Yeah. That's how it should be, you know? Yeah. You, you're looking up to, for the love of what it is. Like it, you know, I love this. I love that things are still happening in it. Yeah. It's the same thing, you, you know, taking it back to skateboarding again, I guess it's a common theme here. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, if you love something, when you see other people coming up in it, you know, there might be a little bit of this, man, I wish I was, you know. <laughs> I wish I still could do this, Yeah, you know, but at the same time, you're glad that it's still growing and going. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's, that's a hard one, man, about like the, just how do you do it? Like, where do you go? Like I, I've, uh, I, I struggle with a lot of that stuff. I, I'm an overthinker. I'm a, I'm, you know, I kind of get into that, that mind space of like, I want to do shirts cause I see everybody's making money doing them, but right. man, I want my shit to be special though. Right. You know what I mean? So like, how do I, 
how do I not like, how do I do this, but make it to where it's like, I feel like even my shirt is a piece of the art that I want to put in the world. Right. right. And I know I sound fucking goofy right now, but that is, that's kind <laughs> of the truth. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it, it all, in all reality, dude, it should all matter. Right. Yeah. It's the thing you get to do. Like the world needs ditch diggers, right? Like yeah. you've, you've had shitty jobs. I've had shitty jobs. Soon as you start about, start thinking about like, I wanted to open my mom owns a nightclub. Like at one point I was going to open a bar and I was mm. like, man, it's just going to be so much fucking drama. Yeah. You know, it's just be so much shit. And then, and then, you know, it got to stay up late and got to yeah. do all this other shit doing this stuff and having people want it. I, it, I, yeah. I not every day because I get distracted, but it's a blessing. And, uh, that's what I said earlier. Like when I looked at your page, I was like, this is a little different audience, but like, the first thing everyone says is it's freedom, mm -hmm. right? Why do you ride a motorcycle? Oh, man, it's freedom. Describe freedom. I yeah, just mean doing whatever you want. You know, whatever it is, right? It's yeah. all kind of along that same yeah. thing. Well, if I show up in a fucking purple tutu on my neon orange knucklehead because mm -hmm. I'm a fucking individual and I believe in freedom, yeah, that's not going to go over too well. Right. Because, you, you know, and that I, I've gotten in our scene, I think it would work. OK, I, we love that. Yeah. Shit, so. <laughs> we don't but, we don't like the too serious bikers. Right. Though. Well, you know, like there you there are plenty of people that that is where their um, ego and their machismo is tied up. Yeah. And when you'll hear the hipster word a lot, some fucking hipster on a sportster. Hey, man, I know it, it annoys me, too, sometimes. But like that person most likely is chasing the same thing. They just got a different job than you and dress a certain way. Like I, I don't ever think it should be so cookie cutter. Yeah. And I took so much shade for being a skateboarder in the beginning of this. I kept it really separate. Yeah. I was like, I skated and then I did this. I never had the bike at the skate park. Every star, Hey man, let's take the bike up to the skate park. I'm like, the bike doesn't go to the fucking skate park. I've never put a, I don't put a skateboard on a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. You know, I like keep, I do still keep them pretty separate, but, um, that, uh, when, you know, getting that shade and whatever I go, Oh man, I'm pissing some people off because I'm doing it a little bit different mm. and I'm not, uh, I'm not a tough guy. You know, I grew how I grew up. There's the toughest motherfuckers in the world and mm -hmm. I can't compete with them. So I had to have a sense of humor and some charm. Yeah. I mean, I can, we, there was plenty of fighting, but, uh, it, it didn't get you anywhere. Yeah. I, I mean, another common thing we've been talking about on a couple of episodes, I feel like those people that kind of are offended by what you do, it's because you're challenging their idea of who they are. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. It's like 100%. Well, that dude's getting attention. Everybody loves him. And he's looks like he's being a clown and I'm here in my, you know, all my color proper stuff yeah. looking as hard as possible. And they don't like me. So this dude's a fucking chump. He's a hipster. He's right. everything else in the book, Yeah, but it's really just, it's them. It's them that right. like they're, they're too insecure yep. to just, you know, be like, fuck it. You know? Well, and I've, I've been that guy. Right. I've been that guy. Same. And if it's about freedom, if that's what, if you're preaching freedom, mm -hmm. Better let that person be who they want to be. Yeah. Especially if they're not doing you any harm. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the thing is we're all so ignorant at points in our life and so fucking judgmental. And it all comes from within here. It all comes from your insecurities. Like I said, I turned 50 last week. It, that's a weird number, man. It's heavy duty, right? <laughs> like I feel 27, you know, yeah. like I feel the same until I walk to the bathroom at three in the morning. Then it yeah. hurts. But like. I still just want to enjoy life and have fun, just like everybody else. Yeah, um, well, 50 is a new 30, though, by the way. Okay, good. That's to what know. I heard. They're, 20, they're taking 20 off now. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, man, it's a. Uh, I wish I could go. You know, people say I wouldn't change a thing. Mm -hmm. I have no regrets. I've never been that person. Yeah. I have fucking plenty of regrets. And one of them is just being so judgmental or reacting to people's hatred. You know, I've had a meme made memes made about me and shit making fun of me. And I, oh no, you know, it's like, you it's like, man, that sad person had to sit there and look at my face and adjust it and write something like yeah. what a sad little life yeah. that you're living instead of just like listening to fucking black Sabbath and getting stoked. You know, there's so mm -hmm. much to stoke yourself out on 
that that's you know i would and i've thrown shade yeah but at the same i look at like you and and whatnot as like someone who you're in two very very niche cultures right right skateboarding when like kind of in the birth of like modern skateboarding if you will you know what i mean um and then you got like this chopper thing that kind of the birth of that as well and, and rebirth the yeah. rebirth of it yeah. because when you guys you and whoever else was involved at that time this was like this underlying lying thing that was taking place in our motorcycle culture that blew up late yeah. 2000s and then all yep. through the, the the what are they the odds or the teens or whatever yeah. the fuck they call it the teens yeah. yeah it's like in you know now it's kind of mainstream now right right it is and skateboarding went from yeah underground to mainstream and so i mean how does I mean, that's got to affect you, right? Because when you're sitting there on that rooftop eating the donuts, watching the world come on, mm -hmm. you you know, this is an experience that everybody else is never going to have because when they come into it, it's not going to be available to them. Right. They're going to come in at a different time yep. or a different angle that just they didn't get to see this thing grow from nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, you know, skating had its thing in the 70s. Then it faded. Then it got popular. It's real similar. Choppers yeah. had the 60s. Then it faded. Then it, this is the biggest swing it's had for old style choppers mm -hmm. since the 60s. Um, and that's that thing. You know, everyone thinks everyone's killing it and getting rich. And like, you know, the girls at Born Free sure look a lot better probably then at a bike show in the 80s yeah. maybe probably i've seen some daytona photos look pretty good but yeah you know like there's a whole thing about it breasts got better shape they yeah. had <laughs> brawl technology came <laughs> yeah, a long way that might be it uh <laughs> and they got the the app to make it all smooth everything oh, yeah, out. yeah for sure but no i think uh i trip on that stuff like the the ebb and the flow the up and the down like where are we at right now i remember six years ago telling rachel this is it this is as big as it's gonna get Mm. And now it's bigger, but still no one's really, you know what I think's made it bigger though? Like, cause I've been around it for the last six years since 16. So whatever. Um, I think it's kind of more people have come into it, even though they're not buying, they're not drinking the Kool-Aid per se, like they're all riding choppers, right. but everything chopper related is bringing every other bike to it. That it's the, it's yeah. the culture, the style that is appealing to everybody else because it's, it, it maybe really does represent some freedom, a freedom of like, you're not chasing uh, all the, you know, the brands and the shirts, like you said, the right. streetwear to look the part, like you're right. just, everybody's like uniquely different. If you really, if you were deep yeah. dive, look different. Right. But then if, you know, like someone with a pair of glasses on, that's not paying attention. They think all everybody's dressing like hipsters and being weird and right. they just want vintage everything. And right. there's definitely those people out there, but I think that no one's looking deep enough to understand that, you know, just like a painter that always dresses in a certain clothes is used to having dirty pants and right. used to having dirty nails and yeah. shit. It's like it, 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 some of this bleeds into you. Now, don't get me wrong. Right. I'm, I'm a weird dude. I, yes, last year. Yeah. Last year I saw, I guess an Instagram ad or a dude with a necklace on. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I got to have one. Right. And I just like, I feel like it's the stupidest <laughs> thing I've ever done because I'm not a jewelry person yeah. at all, but I fucking love it, dude. That's and so I feel fun. cool as shit. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. I just was looking at necklaces the other day because I seen this young tattooer kid with one. And I was like, man, it looks really sick on him. <laughs> but uh, that's just, it's funny that you just said that. But no, nah, man, it's a, uh, it is, you're right. Like at Born Free, sometimes my, my buddy will go, like he built a bike and he goes, he goes, look at all the people. How many people do you think really like get it? Like what we do? And mm -hmm. I'm like, 4%. Yeah. 4% will tell you like what that is, what you did and that they get it. Mm -hmm. And I remember this a dude in the city he's a cool dude, but he moved here and he had like an 883 Sportster. Looked like he painted it with crayons and, and a rattle can. And it had like kind of a trippy paint job. And I had like my bike I'd put fucking years into and i go to this just a cute girl at the bar i go hey are those bikes the same she goes yeah those are choppers right and i go yeah is one like crazier than the other one or you think one's more valuable or one one person put in like a lot more time and craftsmanship she goes no they're the same yeah and i just like fuck well that that's exactly the truth i mean that's what happens with paint too i mean right. you know i get that all the time i see people 
they they just see the surface of it. Like I have paint, so that's just another check off the, the list of shit you need, right? They don't see quality. They don't see time. Some people do, like you said, the four percent, right. which is probably awkward, awkwardly might be pretty accurate, right? Uh, of a guesstimation there you got, <laughs> but yeah, that that's always been a struggle for, for anybody that creates because what would you know? The better you get at creating, it's almost like the more you alienate yourself from the other 96% of the people that don't care or look deep enough to give a fuck. Right. You know? And, uh, and then you, you know, like I said, the perspective of trying to stay appreciative of the 4% that notice it. Right. You know, and not be jaded of the 96% that didn't. You Dude. Know? And you got the, and this will f- still fuck me up. You got the influencer person that doesn't turn the wrench, but they kind of pretend they do. And then they're promoting something you like. Mm hmm. That fucks with my head because you know we're we're down here, yeah. You know, filling up the bottles yeah. down at the welding store, trying to kick them in the cool. Yeah. You know, with one hand, really? yeah. <laughs> but like you're doing the, all the all the little things, you know. And yeah. you're like, man, you are. You just put on the costume and you're saying the right words and like you're gonna profit off. So this. think about it like this because we kind of I was in the motorcycles or kind of a little bit after you, but. When in the, in 2002, three, four, five, like the, the motorcycle industry was about the builders. It was never about the fucking Hellenbach shirt company. It was never about strip club choppers. That was just a t-shirt company. I believe, I don't know. Right. It was never about those brands. Those brands always just try to piggyback off top of these massive builders. Right. Right. And then when internet came, it seems like, and this is all just some hypothetical thing that right. I thought of. Um, builders are like, man, I, I I weld, I paint, I work with my hands. I don't fuck with these computers. Well, fast forward 10, 15 more years and all those people that grew up, now they're coming up and they know this shit because they, their, their mom handed them an iPad, right. you know, and in 06 and shit, right? Now they understand how to use the internet and the people that know how to do the things that are cool don't know how to do it. And there's nobody to promote it anymore. Right. Right. Think about it. Monster garage, biker build off, uh, all these shows that used to go chase, you know, talented people to exploit them on, on magazines. Right. Right. At least magazines mainstream in like every Walmart across America. She doesn't exist anymore. You got the car world, you got your gas monkeys, but nobody, Nobody focuses on the art or the craftsmanship. They focus on the, the uh, I'm going to go tell this dude he wants four grand. I'm going to get him to down to two. Right. And that's what people, you right, know. Right, so right. media has curated the way people tell stories now. They don't tell stories of hard work. They tell stories of how people get over on each other. Yeah. Right. That's the win, weird. the good deal. Yeah. You know, I noticed that in old choppers and it, this one really trips me out. Uh, and for people that aren't into old choppers, you know, there's a thing called a survivor. Mm. that's one you find and it's been sitting in a barn somewhere or whatever and they wheel it out there's really good talented bike builders that have put together survivors and put a lot of love into it i have one survivor um i changed it a bit where it's kind of like the original way they they built it back then yeah it was missing the tank and and i had heard something was different so i changed it back that thing took me a long time to build because i was like trying to do it justice but there's the dudes that literally like wheel the bike out and they're like, boom, the survivor. And you're like, cool. You found a, you found a cool bike. Mm-hmm. You were, you're good at Craigslist, right? <laughs> yeah. It, but I, I, I had a dude say it to me the other day. I think I might take the survivor out there. And it was a bike show. And I was like, well, what are you going to say? Are you going to have a sign for the dude that built it yeah. originally? Like, I'm not quite sure why you're so proud. You're just wheeling something. But then like, you know, there's uh, that uh, Ryan Grossman found that bike, the Quicksilver, mm-hmm. and he put that thing back together like to the T. And I guarantee you that was a pain in the dick mm-hmm. to make it perfect. Like that's a little bit different than just wheeling yeah. it out of the, the guy's yeah. garage and putting gas in it and firing it up. But um, there's two sides to that. But then there are, literally are people in this bike thing that are just good at Craigslist. Yeah. And you're kind of like, okay. And they get a shit ton of validation and i i think that becomes their dope right there yeah. they're just like i found this i found that where before i think when you were talking about 2003 2004 i mean i remember riding down to paso robles and wheeling this bike i one of my first bikes in and i was like 
this is my pride and fucking joy. Mm. I've spent so much time on it. Be nice. You know, like, whoo. But, you know, I was proud of that thing. I was like, put it out there. It's mostly cars. Because it used to be more cars, less bikes. Now I feel like it's more bikes, less cars. But that was like, that was all me. Mm -hmm. Every every part of that was all me. And that, you know, that's something, you know, I wrote this song or I fucking made this food or whatever. Like, it, it was a lot I put into it where now there is a there is clout in finding something cool i think the clout comes from people give attention to the thing they feel like they can become right the, it's like easier. the easier path yeah yeah you know what i mean and uh i mean i don't mean i don't i don't want to start shit with anybody that listens to this yeah. and anything but you know when i when i think about you know my past and the things i've had to learn how to do to to make myself relevant in motorcycles before the internet and now that the internet's come along, I've played the internet game as much as I know how to, um, as I on a podcast, right? Right. Um, it, it is weird sometimes whenever your your competition or not even competition, but the other people that are also doing the things that have nothing to do with they, they didn't grow up building bikes or right. you know, you know, doing crackhead shit to make it through the week right, and stuff, right, you know. Right. Um it's just a weird place to be. And it, it and but that's one of those things. That's my shit though. You know what right. I mean? Like, cause I can't change the whole fucking world and the way they yeah. act. And I don't matter how many podcasts we do. There's more of them. There's us. So if you just go out there and start talking about this all the time, you're just going to ostracize yourself for sure. You know? So you got to find a way to live with AIDS basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got a magic Johnson. This yeah. City. <laughs> no, dude, I, I trust me a few years back. I, I pigeonholed myself because yeah. I was like, you know, that's not right. It's just dumb. You yeah. know, it's like, I was too proud. And I mm-hmm. thought it should be one way that I could control it. And if I told everyone, like, that guy's a clown or this or that, like, man, they like that guy. Yeah. I probably don't see that dude for who they are. Mm-hmm. Too worried about, like, one experience I had or whatever. It's what we talked about earlier, man. You get a little bit older and you're like, I can't control shit, but I can enjoy this ride. Mm-hmm. You know, last night I'm up at... I play this fucked up game in my head. You might like this. When I can't sleep, I heard you're supposed to clean your room. Mm. Put my put my socks here. You clean your shop. Oh, fuck, man. I find that extremely boring. But I've been doing this thing with skate tricks. Alphabetically, I drop in to an alley-oop backside air, right? So I'm A, B. Then I do a crail slide. Then I do a disaster. Oh, then I do an eggplant. Then I do a frontside invert. And by the time I'm at W which it gets real weird around uh, Q and Q. Z or whatever. I'm tired and I fall back asleep. Oh, shit. Yeah. But I just, it, I, I've been running that thing. But I woke up last night, like usual, two or three in the morning. And I started tripping on something that I saw and some bullshit. Mm-hmm. And I stopped. I'm, I sleep right up there. And this is down here. And I fucking took inventory on how fucking lucky I am. Mm-hmm. And that was it. I smiled. I laid there in bed and I was kind of smiling. You know, I just got engaged, whatever. Like how quickly we we can just pick up this thing and play the comparison game. Like Mm -hmm. I said, for kids these days, not not only do they have to like see all the stuff and see all the consuming, but they have to like look at uh, people constantly that they think have it better than they do. Yeah. And that's just fucked up, you know, like it's uh, it's a blessing to be able bodied and live in this, live in this world, especially Mm -hmm. if you can, I mean, there's a lot worse places to live. Like, you know, I'm, I don't talk politics, but like, I'm very proud to be an American. Mm -hmm. I'm like proud of my lineage. I'm proud of like the Irish that came here and built this country. Mm -hmm. Not a popular time in the world to say that, (laughs) but it's just the fucking truth. Yeah. You know, and that uh, my grandfather was a diesel mechanic I and mean, it skipped my dad and it landed back on me. And, uh, you know, my grandma loved this shit and he smelled like diesel. And she said every morning, wake up and there'd just be a stain around him because he smoked <laughs> Lucky Strikes without the filter. Yeah. But uh, my mom's uh, sister, my aunt, came here and she just gave me a bunch of his tools. And uh, she just said, you know, your grandpa would be so proud of you. That's awesome. And I was like, fuck you know like are you seeing these are just shitty old motorcycles but she was just like i know what it means she understood what it means to like work with your hands and make stuff yeah and how he was proud to do that 
And those are those moments where you're like, I trip on the stupidest shit. And she just said that. And I get to do this, at least for now. Yeah. Like, you know, my end plan when it all fades is I'm going to be the smartest dude at the hardware store. <laughs> Maybe not the smartest, but I'm going to know where everything is because yeah. I go there every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I'm cool with that. Like yeah. if, if this whole thing explodes and I'm selling my vans from 2000 on eBay and hustling these parts out and it loses all its value, bro, I'll walk right five blocks down to the hardware store. I'll put on my name tag and help you find a toilet plunger. Did you use a skateboard? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, you know, dude, it's, uh, it's just, uh, like I said, we get so wrapped up and yeah. that was the first thing I saw with that, those machines is this and that road mm -hmm. and that calming, you know, I sleep to like that box fan app. It sounds like a box fans. Yeah. Going, Same. You know, it's that there's, there's a real special thing. And I don't care if you're on a Honda or an FXR, a Beamer, whatever it is. Like I do think you're more connected on a chopper. Like for yeah. all the, all the new bike people out there, like, there is a real, when you're low on a rigid frame on an, you hear every moving part, there's something mm -hmm. super fucking cool with that. That, that's my yeah, two yeah. cents, you know, that's just, and I've ridden one 8,000 miles, yeah. right? And then rode it, you know, two summers later, a 38 knuckle to Tom Fugel's party and back, you mm. know, no problems, you know, nice. just cruising. That's a beautiful feeling. Put something together, ride it back. But but you are, I feel like, a little more connected on an old bike. But, man, my FXR and a quart of PPG paint, you know, like when I'm doing that Born Free Hustle and I'm doing 90 down the 880 on an FXR, mm -hmm. carefree with a full-face helmet, like that's a bitching feeling too. Yeah. But it's just uh, whatever you take. There's a lot it. of different flavors is basically what it is. And yeah. some of them are... Some of them are probably, you know, fast food. Some of them are probably like real good, you know, uh, super foods. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But uh, peanut butter think, and chocolate ice cream. I got to find that. That's yeah. <laughs> peanut butter. And, oh, I was thinking about Bomb Pop. Yeah. No, Fudge Bomb. Those ones. Oh, yeah, the yeah. Banana yeah. in the middle. Yeah, yeah. My favorite. <laughs> um, I think that, you know, like going through the different, like every type of motorcycle can give you a new experience. Ride the same roads you know, it changed the bike and it's a new ride. You know what I'm saying? And, um, I didn't, I didn't necessarily grow up in an area where I, where access to somebody that could show me old Harleys. So I came through sport bikes and all that right. shit. And lo and behold, I funnel into this world and I'm, you know, if I could have one regret, I've, I wish that somebody would have told me about this sooner. You know what I mean? Right. I wish I would have saw a documentary sooner. I wish I would have looked at easy riders, for the bikes instead of the titties, you know, right. I wish I would have done all that stuff differently. Right. Um, but you know, the perspective thing, I get to experience a lot of this shit for the first time now. And I'm stoked about that. And I'm appreciative of it. You know, I just, I just started liking deviled eggs. I never had one before. <laughs> it's pretty fucking rad, dude. Yeah. Hey, you can be 40 years old, finding something new. I ate beets last night. Was that it good? Dirt. You know, it tastes just like dirt beets. And I like them, you know, <laughs> It's yeah, you, you, you got plenty of time, yeah. you know, and you know what? I think when this thing swings down, this popularity thing, mm -hmm. uh, I know I'm still going to be here, but like I said, I might work at the hardware store during the day and the prices get a little bit more affordable. I hope you can build yourself an old shovel head or something. I do want to. Yeah. Just so you know, it's, it is a cool trip, you know, the knucklehead thing. It's a, uh, it's just wild because. I used to find them down kind of where you said you were down the valley, mm -hmm. 12 grand, complete bike, yeah. ride at home, you know, and now I can't even buy the motor for that much. Yeah. And that's a blessing and a curse because the price tag goes up. Mm -hmm. But um, I tell you, if you're on a generator shovel, because that's kind of where I stop on old bikes is a, at 69, mm -hmm. or you're on a knuckle and it's in a rigid frame and you have it set it a certain way you're not going to be complaining that you're on that generator shovel mm -hmm. that those fuckers are bad. Right. And the knuckles beautiful. There's no get stoned, get, take mushrooms and look at one. And it's, they, yeah. they speak they're, they're from the heavens. Right. <laughs> but 
if I had one old bike for the rest of my life, it'd probably be a generator shovel. Mm -hmm. Just because they run hard, they're they're easy to work on, they're really rebuildable. Um, they run a little cooler than a knuckle, but uh, it's funny sometimes because I see like a twenty three year old and he's like, "Man, I gotta get a knucklehead." It's like, bro, you have a fucking generator shovel project right there. S stay on course. Yeah, you know you're drifting off the road. Like, finish that thing and go look at your reflection in the mirror when you ride by and tell yourself you're a badass. Mm -hmm. because you are like the, 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 the whole knuckle thing, you know, it's just, I just found one cheap. I, I said this in the beginning, I'm going to have my 69 cause that was the first generator shovel, uh, I had, and I had a panhead frame and I'm going to have a 50 Chevy truck and that's it. Mm -hmm. A good lady fucking, you know, I'm learned to play guitar and I'm done. Then I found a panhead Really good deal on a panhead, running panhead. I was like, okay, generator shovel, panhead, <laughs> Chevy truck, good old lady. Yeah. Then I found out about a knuckle, and I was like, well, that kind of makes sense. Knuckle, pan, shovel, I'm done. Yeah. Then you hear about another knuckle, and you're like, fuck. But in all reality, <laughs> there's many a day where I'm like, if I had to pick one or I had to pick two, mm -hmm. okay, with my Chevy, okay. I'm good. Yeah. But you know, it's my business. So if I see a good deal on something, I have to grab it, but it's never about like a flex or anything like that. But yeah. I, I wish the, the younger guys listening that want an old bike, you know, find yourself a good cone shovel, mm -hmm. stick it in a rigid frame, build Start what you there. like. Yeah. Yeah. Put your, put the blind, put the phone down. I think that's probably gonna be my first one is just a cone shovel. Yeah. Um, there's, there's still quite a, I mean, you can get those pretty cheap. 3500 you know, bucks 3500 yeah. bucks i mean everywhere and i i'm in love with the tough shovel look i, I yeah. like that stance little sh narrow bar super narrow bike um yeah. it's like a fxr cone yeah, shovel exactly yeah. but the other thing is like there's just so many different styles of choppers there's so many different things that kind of like you have to really be around them a lot to see them because i've all you know anytime like a new car or truck comes out i'm like that's fucking ugly yeah and then you start seeing it and you're like god damn it like the, those headlights are kind of growing on yeah. yeah and so the same thing when you're around a lot of these different styles of choppers these yeah. different tanks and you start to learn a little bit of the history of why and this and where yeah. this kind of flavor came from it's like it starts to kind of uh fill in the blanks in your mind of what this represents and then you start to like look at it with like the real eyes that it needs to be looked at For it with sure right and so you know i I'm guilty. I go to Born Free and I chase all my buddies down that are, you know, San Diego Customs and all these right. other guys that are here and stuff. But, you know, I go out and I walk through all the bikes in the uh, in the shows and check them out. And I just don't know enough yet. But right. I know eventually it will happen. We had a really, really nice chopper scene in Dallas for a minute. And then it kind of, it was really tightened together. And then it kind of spread out. Now there's like factions, if you will. Right. Um, I don't think there's any beef. I just think it's more yeah. convenience. You know what I mean? Totally. Um, but yeah, I mean, when we had Chopper Supply going on in Dallas, dude, it was yeah. like, it was just fucking everybody what came. What city was that in? Fort Worth. Yeah, that's a cool town. That's yeah. the cattle town. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they had, and Chopper Supply was in the stockyards, which are, you know, famous yeah. for that shit. And uh, it was a great time. I mean, it didn't last long, but I was, I'm glad I got to see and experience a piece of that. Right. And, um, you know, there's still a lot of great events, you know, Born Freeze in Texas now as well. We don't have Giddy Up anymore, which was the coolest thing I ever went to in my life. Right, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Mama tries pretty rad. Yeah. When you go when you go to Milwaukee, it's just like you feel like you just you're you're at Gaia. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like you're you're at the motherland. Yeah. You know, and then to find out like how many almost everybody in that city has somebody in their family that worked for the dealer or right. worked for the, the Harley, you know what I mean? Yeah. Building or whatever. Yeah. I rode through there. I just, it wasn't, there was no event. Yeah. Yeah. Know, I just like had a beer and yeah, I kept like, it oh, rolling where they made them. Okay. <laughs> or where they make them. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. It's a, that, that chopper thing, you know, sometimes people say like, Oh, you, you build one style of thing, mm -hmm. you know, like every bike has its little nuance, but like, it's just my favorite style mm. yeah you know and i think that's what more people need to be like like hey man this is what i like you yeah know? you find your 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 thing you know yeah I, mean? I i mean you know I, I i used to listen to a lot of heavy metal and i remember when metallica started making different sounding albums and i was like no nah, no nah, kill them all 
ride the lightning. Let's stick with the program. Boys. I like justice for all. Yeah, man. no, no, no. I, I feel you. <laughs> no, and you know what? It, the older I got, the I would like scoot that back a little bit. Yeah. So you know, I feel like it's the same thing with the bike. Like yeah. you told me, I was going to build a swing arm knucklehead one day. I was like, "You're high. There's no way. <laughs> they look perfect in a rigid frame." Yeah. I love my little. You know, I love to ride that little swing arm knuck. Yeah. But it's uh, your style changes. But like, I'm too stubborn. Like even with skateboarding there was certain tricks I would refuse to do on vert. And I was like, that's like a show off trick. It looks stupid. I'll never do it. I, I would never to this day. Yeah. Did I do it? Or maybe I did one and I'm like, it's stupid. Right. <laughs> but that, you can do it. Just yeah. Yeah. Know. Cause you should sometimes be like, if you're like FXRs are dumb, you're like, why don't you borrow this for the weekend and tell me that? Yeah. And if you did, if they did, you're like, oh, okay, well you're an idiot, but you know, <laughs> no, but no, they just, then they knew. But, uh, that, that, that is the one thing with the chopper thing. It's like, I like a certain style, all the posters around my spot. Yeah. You know, I tweak everything on everyone, but, but I'm not going to change that. Yeah. You know, like, uh, someone said it to me once a hot rod guy is like, you ever seen a good, uh, 32 Ford Roadster? It's like, yeah. It's like, they all kind of look a certain way, right? They got that thing. And you're like, right. When it starts to get tweaked too much with modern parts or billet parts, it kind of loses that that thing. Yeah. But like a traditionally built one is built a certain way. Mm-hmm. And it always looks good. And that's kind of how I feel about like a panhead built well. You're like, you stray too far from that, it, it looks weird for a reason. You just, yeah. you're a... Uh, What's that movie? Uh, he went full retard, you know, oh, like yeah. we probably <laughs> simple Jack. Yeah. Simple Jack. He's, <laughs> he's simple Jack that thing. Um, but yeah, man, that's a, that is one critique on the chopper thing to some people. They all look the same. Yeah. It's like, sometimes they all look the same to you cause you don't speak that language. Exactly. Yet. But when you learn that language, you'll start to see the nuances. Yeah. It's the same way people are in the FXR is like, there's, you know, that's a very modified bike over, you know, the last 40 years, you know, that it's in, of its existence from like, you know, fucking pro street style choppers yeah. to, you know, you know, club style stuff that's now to just, you know, people just making it look like they did off the lot. You know what I mean? Right. But, and there's always people to nerd out like, oh, that's a fucking, that's a windshield model. That's a fucking fairing model. Right. And right. I get it. You know, but at the same time, it's like, I, I, I'm just glad people care enough about those things to even go that deep into understanding them. Totally. Cause I mean, it just makes it to where I don't have to like right. my boy in <laughs> up, up in sack made a whole book about him and you can open the book and there's every fucking thing you've ever wanted to know. And yeah. even stories yeah. about certain people in the FXR world back then, you know, it's a weird book, yeah. but FXR bizarre, it. man. Okay. It's right ass. Oh, he's the one that runs that account? Yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. he made the book and all that shit. And then uh, really badass, dude. Good That's dude. That's cool. But yeah. He's from Sac, though. Yeah, just uh, just south of Sac, between Lodi okay. and Sac. So. I heard, um, you know, John Cardiel, the skater? Ah, uh, no. He's like a anti-hero. He's, he's the, the gnarliest skateboarder. Mm-hmm. But uh, he had an injury that kind of fucks him up from skating now. But the dude, you know, would gainer off the roof of the hotel right when we got there land right in the center of the drain perfectly just just the the most just full throttle yeah since he was a kid and uh he he got into bikes recently or in the last few years and he's like 110 for real just splitting lanes like he found his thing like yeah he lost skating how he could do it at least how i was gonna ask you that i'm glad you brought that back up so what what do you think it was this draw that kind of so many skaters have come over into the motorcycle world you know over i mean back in the day to even now you know what I no mean? no it's a thing it, it's like a thing and it used to kind of bother me you know because i was like what's the trend here yeah but you know Remember when you'd skate by, an old lady, look at you, because the noise can continue going yeah. down the sidewalk. I think it's similar, but I also think it's a, uh, it's just like a red blooded American thing. Like mm-hmm. it, it, we kind of invented skating, right? Americans, mm-hmm. I think, pretty much. I mean, I mean, what we know skating to be now. I mean, yeah. maybe. I mean, if you're talking like Dogtown and Z-Boy stuff, that's, you know, that's still a yeah, very predominant SoCal yeah, that, thing. that's us. But I mean, I just mean like that, uh, and same with the chopper, or same with the hot rod. Yeah. You know, like there's a part of us where it's just, you like, you want to ring that bell. And I think in skate, um, I think like, 
skating's tough. You know, it's hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, motorcycles are not as, like, physically challenging. And I'm maybe someone's going to disagree with me, but they probably never skateboarded. Yeah. Um, they're, but there's some, like, obnoxiousness and, like, loudness and, like... You know, dissidents, basically. Uh, you're yeah. You're just kind of creating something yeah, in Yeah, that. you're kind of like, hey, man, like, fucking up everyone's day for a second, but in a good way. I don't know. There's, yeah. like, something just so sick about it. Like, I'll, I'll see one going down the road, and I don't know the person. I usually know who the person is. And This kid, he goes to Cal Berkeley. He built a pan hit in his... Dude, it's not even a one-car garage. Under a light bulb. He built his whole pan head. I saw him out there painting it one day. I was like, the fuck is this kid? He's like 24. Mm -hmm. He's a math genius. Uh, I see him riding down the road on the thing. I'm like, who the fuck is this kid? If I knew where he lived, I went by there. And he, sure enough, he's a skater and he kind of knew me. And I think he just had that thing. He said, he's like, I love, he can do a kickflip, backside, nose, blunt, side, switch 360 flip. I mean, good street mm -hmm. skater. And he just said that. He's like, I love the challenge of skating, and I knew the first time I saw a chopper, I needed to have one. So I don't know why. That's my yeah. answer. But I think, I think there it is, does lend itself to it. Yeah. Yeah. I think, especially when you're wrenching on them, I think like something goes wrong and you're like, man, I got to figure this out. Mm -hmm. You know, I've pulled, this was a bummer, rode to Portland and back, and I was almost home, stopped in some little, you, some little hippie town. My friend went to that gas station and I went to this gas station just because like, boom, we did the split off the freeway and I'm gassed up and we leave and we're like, it's the last tank home. You know, mm -hmm. we're fucking, I'm on the generator shovel. We're dipping just like, yeah, man, sun setting. Wah, bah, bah, bang, bang, pop, 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 boom. Fuck. And he, we got a tow strap and he towed me, which was so sketchy to this <laughs> town. And I go through everything. You know, like, yeah. just fucking put new plugs in, fires up. Bang, da, bang, 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 bang. So I'm like, fuck it. Someone comes and gets me. For like two days, I'm taking apart my magneto, putting it together. Get another magneto, put it in. And I would leave my house and fucking make it a block. Bang, 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 boom, bang, bop. You know what it is? Yeah. Do you have any idea? Mm -mm. So carbs. I'm doing everything. Like fucking, I put a timer on there, you know, at one point like a traditional distributor with a battery, make it the same distance that I got bad gas. I got gas with water in it. Oh, that's what it was? So finally, someone's like, you drain the tank. Oh, everyone said vapor lock. Yeah, vapor lock. I'm like, don't have fucking vapor lock. There's a phew, when I let off the thing. But there was water in that gas. Oh, shit. And I think when it separated, when I filled it, maybe the water went up and the good gas went down and it drank it and we'd get to it. But my... I should have known, you know, this was in the beginning. Yeah. But my plugs kept getting black. Mm. So, was, you know, you'd think like weak spark or something. And everyone, you know, if you don't love magnetos, you, you don't like them. So it's all, it's the magneto. You'll yeah, hear, yeah. it's the magneto. And you're like, those things are in Cessnas, man. They're fucking, people yeah. use them for a reason. But yeah, put a fresh tank in, wire brush the plug. <laughs> Done. Two days. I I was like, I'm going back to that fucking town. I'm burn that gas station down. <laughs> you know, I was just so fucking chapped. It's kind of good though. Like I, I've always felt like uh, when you have those kind of problems, it, it's like you're thinking the worst. It could be yeah. something even bad. But yeah, when you, it's just it's nice if you can figure it out on the road though. It'd be much nicer. I know. I you know. know. Instead I, of having to put it on a truck or something. Yeah. You know, dude. I've I've once uh, Rachel and I went for like a big spin 600 800 miles she's she's a soldier she's got a scar on her butt crack you know sure. from sitting on those pee pads but we were pulling in we got stuck in a lot of traffic coming from sacramento and we bump into my driveway clutch explodes just fucking booze goes everywhere damn right in the driveway and she goes honey i'm so sorry and i'm like no <laughs> We're good. Like, <laughs> yeah. this is where you want to break down, right here. At the I, end. <laughs> yeah, the valve seat uh, kick-started my 38 knuckle in the driveway once. I don't know if I was coming home or leaving, but I started it, and it, like, bang, bang, bang. The whole valve seat dropped out. Mm -hmm. Took the heads off, and the valve was, seat was hang, holding the valve up mm -hmm. right in the driveway before it wreaked any havoc on anything else, you know? Mm -hmm. so I'll bad. take those all day long. 
compared to being on, like every time I'm on the Bay Bridge, you know, you're like, dude, Woo-hoo. I always, I, I talk about that a lot on here too. It's like, uh, especially when you're coming back and you, you know, and you're on the bottom yeah, <laughs> and you're like, yeah, in the nineties, this motherfucker collapsed on some people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then, you know, for, you know, Texas, we're flat as hell. So when we I always tell us like when you're going across the Bay Bridge, you're like as high as a skyscraper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like you feel the you feel the bridge moving, but it's sick as fuck. You want to look out everywhere, yeah. but you're also like, don't think about the fact that, you know, it could be an earthquake or some shit. Yeah, you know what I mean? Totally. Like try not to, you know, psych yourself out on the situation. But yeah, riding across those bridges is always gnarly. Yeah, I love it. I love the bottom, that sound yeah. of the pillars going by. My dad was seven cars back when the piece fell. Serious? He's in it. He worked in the city, and he was going to the Walnut Creek to the suburbs, and the the piece fell right. And that one lady drove in. It didn't smash any cars when it fell. Oh, it didn't. No, it didn't kill anyone from that. Maybe it like caught someone's trunk, but I don't think it killed anyone. But he was. He said it just stopped, and he was like, "The fuck." And he's like, I can't, he said he like, it was gray asphalt, you know, like an optical illusion that came oh, down. Yeah, you could still see it. Yeah. So he, everyone just was walking back to the city and he's like, okay, there was probably an earthquake. The piece fell. That means Bart, the train's not going to run, which it didn't. Mm-hmm. And, uh, everyone got stuck in the city and was having to like take taxis, which there was none Yeah, all the way around. So he... He was a businessman, man, but he had his running shoes with him in his van. Left the Volkswagen van. He said he left the keys in it. They just called him from a tow yard like five days later. And he shimmied on the edge of the bridge and then came to our house in West Oakland. It's the first wow. time I ever saw a white guy jogging up our street in a suit. And I was like, so one of the neighbors started to clown. They're like, look at this fool. And I was like, that's my dad. <laughs> dad? <laughs> yeah. I had a little Datsun 510 at the time. He's like, yeah. I need a ride home. And I was like, yeah, let's go. And we drove out there. It's, you know, 20 minutes, zero people on the freeway. Yeah, it was thought, wild, I man. thought it was the end of the world. I actually looked at my dad at one point and I was like, are we the last two people on the earth? Because it felt like that. You yeah. Know? that I remember seeing it because I, I remember when it happened, I was in, I was in school. And they put it on the news. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. It was a big deal. Our, our like, walls came down in that big warehouse. Like, walls yeah. came down. All our dishes broke. But that was a beautiful night in the hood. Like, Bro. everyone. You good? You have food? You hungry? You need anything? Like, it was all love. Yeah. Then people started climbing, fucking looting dead bodies and shit. And it stuck. Because the Cypress Freeway, you know, collapsed on all those people mm-hmm. there. That was nasty. People had ladders and shit, and you're like, oh, they're going to help. And pulling fucking watches off people. And Damn. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, it's brutal. Yeah, that was, uh, it, I, I, when know. you were telling me stories, like, I'm, I, I could have swore I remember, like, it, it killed a lot of people, but, you know. That part did. But yeah. when the, I think when the piece fell on the Bay Bridge, it was. But the a, bridge stayed up. It just, the top fell on the bottom, right? Yeah, there's like, you know, like you're driving on that, and it's like tick, 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 tick. Tick yeah. tick, it's built in sections. That yeah. section just went poof, That's right. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. Should we um, end it on the earthquake? Yeah, I was thinking so. Yeah. Well, hey, Max, I really appreciate this. I'm glad to finally uh, meet you. And uh, Pleasure. now you know me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm up here all the time, man. This is like cool. my second home. So we'll run it back after you do some more cool shit. Yeah. Is dude, that cool? Stop by. All right, cool. Right Thanks, on. bud. Appreciate it. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. And I want to thank Max again for taking the time to do it. I really enjoyed uh, getting to know this man, someone I admire heavily as a skateboarder and as a custom motorcycle builder, painter, and everything in between. So if you guys enjoy these podcasts, please check out our sponsors. Links down in the description below. You can get some cool shit for you and your bike as well as support this podcast in the process. So don't forget as well, we are doing our Patreon. We're giving away a Simpson helmet every month. This month, all you got to do is join with the tiers where you can also get unreleased content that we release haven't released any in a while, but we're going to get back to that. I promise. Pinky swear. Anyway, just know that you're supporting this podcast. If you really enjoy listening, it helps us make the trips to go see these people and bring people into the studio. So anyway, I really appreciate you guys listening and we'll be back on another episode really soon.